but my mom, my mom, we come from an Italian side. Uh, my mom's family and uh, Lolly is sort of an Italian ma, okay. like grandmother's name. So she's like she wanted to be called Lolly. And then on Lisa's side, it was Papa, Papa, and oh, Kim. Kim is gonna Kim is gonna destroy me. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what. I don't remember. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> a. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, Kim, if you ever watch this or hear this. Um, I, I like Lisa will say it later, and I'll be like, yeah. oh, of course. But so my dad was like, I literally don't care. Like you can call me sir or yeah. whatever. Um, and I was like, well, what if he calls you Pop Pop? Instead of like Papa, yeah, and it stuck. Yeah. Quest calls him Pop Pop, and, and I'm like, it just sounds so silly. Yeah, but my dad and this gigantic I six pop, loves it. He oh, he loves yeah. Quest. He loves Quest to death, and like so much energy, always running around. Yeah, like you can't ever get him to sit down. My dad loves it. He's all is Quest do you think more like you or Lisa? Oh, he does like me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. My mom my mom's gives me such a hard time because she's like, yeah, that was like literally because like we will get so frustrated with him. Yeah. Obviously, love him to death. Right. Quest, if you see this one day, we love you to death. <laughs> unconditionally. <laughs> but like there are just times where you're like, you're asking him to do something. Hey bud, can you go put this away? Or hey go, hey bud, can you go get a diaper for your sister or whatever? Yeah. And he's like focused in on the TV. Yeah. And just won't like, you know, just won't listen. Even if there's no TV, he's just whatever. Right. And, uh, he has this, he has this saying, he'll go, what'd you say? He won't actually say, what did you say? He'll go, what'd you say? <laughs> and we're like, where is like the J coming from? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, uh, so he won't hear you for like, you'll be like, can you get a diaper for your sister? Nothing. Would you get a diaper for your sister? Nothing. What'd you say? We're like, <laughs> can you please go get a diaper for your sister? My hands are full. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just like, and literally Lisa will, I'll be in the kitchen cooking dinner and Lisa will like say thing, like two things to me. I won't be paying attention. Yeah. The third time she's like, are you even listening to me? If I, if I was, I probably would have acknowledged it. So yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I don't really know. Like yeah. I'm just in my own world. And so she's just like, you and your son, I swear. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not trying to annoy you. I swear, yeah. I'm not trying to annoy you. But it's just funny because like she'll be dealing with Quest all day, and yeah. then like, and then like I'll do the stuff. Then she gets big Quest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big Quest comes <laughs> out. It's just so funny. It's so funny to to. But then Zephyr, on the other hand, Zephyr is just like Lisa. Yeah. In in a certain sense, like, which is funny though. But they both have blue eyes and blonde hair, and so they look like her. Right. I always said before we had them, as long as they look like her, can get her level of attractiveness, yeah. um, which of course I'm biased, like my <laughs> wife, you know, right. but if they can get her level of attractiveness and my Im immune system, I'll be completely happy. Zephyr, Zephyr, Zephyr hasn't quite gotten that. Yeah. She's hit the, she's hit the ER like three times. She got mom's looks and immune system. In, a, uh, in 11 months, yeah. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa had... Um, Lisa had, it's one of the infections where it, it's all over your entire body, sepsis. Okay. I've so, heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. It's sort of like, uh, it's like an infection in your bloodstream. Okay. And, uh, I think, and I think that's like a very rudimentary version of like what I'm, what I want to talking about, but essentially, right. essentially she had, she had Zephyr and then she had an infection, but didn't, didn't know that she had an infection cause she couldn't feel it. Yeah. And then it resulted in sort of an infection throughout her, her entire body. Okay. So then she had to spend five days in the hospital. Oh. To uh, yeah, oh yeah, it was like it's like a huge thing. And I don't know if you've ever slept on like a hospital uh, couch. Maybe maybe soon. Yeah, probably soon. Yeah. Uh, it's awful. It's there's just I don't know what it is about hospital like couch bed situations. Yeah. They're just they seem to be lumpy in the worst spots <laughs> and like just you kind of roll over and you just can't find a spot that's comfy. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things. I don't know. I don't know who produces those, <laughs> but it really like, I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to just get like a furniture person to yeah. just kind of take a look and be like, Hey, if you just did this, it would be a little bit smoother. <laughs> they just, you know, they're just like, nah, you figure it out. Yeah. Maybe I'll just bring the camping stuff. Just bring my little dude, tent. Dude, yeah. Little, like, <laughs> if you have a little bad. cot, too, like, yeah. Maybe, oh, yeah it's like that string would, up a hammock. Dude, for real. <laughs> I go down these, uh, I go down these YouTube, um, I don't know, whatever, they're death scrolling yeah. type thing, but with YouTube, yeah. I, I know, I'm sure the kids 
have a name for it. I don't know what it the is. The kids might, YouTube might be out by now. I was, I was going to say. Three minute video, that's way too long. I, I keep getting caught on like the, <laughs> the like 30 second little yeah. clips that are just like TikTok, but yeah. I don't actually have a social media. Shout out to Lisa for being my social media manager. <laughs> um, so if I comment on something, I may or might, may not have commented on it. It yeah. may have been Lisa. Which, good for you, by the way. Oh, dude. It's, it's probably so good for your mental sanity. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, you have like a bad game or you have a really good game. Right. Or just anything. Like, it's amazing. You don't have to look at any of it. Right. Don't have to look at the comments, although she shares me like some of the funny comments or yeah. like some of the whatever, but it's, a, yeah, it's amazing. I don't have to get into like the drama. Apparently there's like volley drama every now and then yeah there was like panama city drama that i'm just hearing about now it was an entire year ago i don't even know (laughs) i was like i was like cool i don't even that's so far gone that that's great Mm -hmm. um but yeah like i don't have to worry about any of the drama yeah i don't all i get are like little snippets of the good stuff if that makes sense um from lisa well that's one of our rituals too we'll uh when you have two kids, especially with ones like really little and ones a little bit bigger, uh, you don't get a lot of time to like further your relationship. Right. As that's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you find you find time. You manufacture time, and everyone's relationship is ever is different. And so you find time to to further your relationship. Um, our ours lately has been uh, TikToks on the couch after okay. the kids go to bed. So she'll save a bunch of TikToks. Um, she has like some funny sports ones that I just I uh, love. Yeah. Um, some guy who calls Kirk Cousins Perk Cousins. <laughs> I don't know why I find it so funny or Perk Rogers for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I just like like I just love it. It's so funny. Um, which is so funny too because I, do you like when you're when you're commentating? Do you have like? a book or do you have like in the background you have like Hoosiers or like remember the Titans on? Cause I feel like I watch you commentate and you just have like all the sports, like sayings just down pat. So we grew up with like the VHS, right? Okay. And <laughs> yes. So we, absolutely. my brothers, we would go to, this was every Friday, Saturday. So okay. we'd go to uh blockbuster or Best Buy. I forget which one it was. Okay. And so we'd rent a movie on Friday. Okay. And we'd watch it. We'd wake up early the next morning and we'd rewind it. Yeah, together, and then we yeah. watch it again. <laughs> and then on Saturday we get a new movie, watch it. Sunday morning rewind it. So the the library of sports movies and movies yes. I've watched is extensive. And because okay. we watched them twice back to back when we were kids, like I have me and my brothers, we can just talk in movie quotes. Uh, yeah, all, all yeah, day, yep. man. And feel so that. I have like '90s movies. Uh huh. I'm pretty dang good with like '90 movie trivia and movie quotes. Uh-huh. Like I can. I don't. Remember like Times is my favorite movie. Oh, is it really? Yeah. It's it's, I mean, it's one of the greatest. Yeah. So I, I really like it. The fact that you said that, I was like, yeah, I mean, I can tell you pretty much. I can go line by line for, for almost the whole movie. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because I, you know, I watched the commentating. And you're not, like, you know, quoting movies, obviously. Right. But it's, like, all of the, you know, sort of the words that are synonymous with sports right. just pop up, you yeah. know? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's, like, the perfect word for what just happened. Like, <laughs> okay, cool. You know, as, as opposed to... Um, it's funny. Uh, we were in Atlantic City, um, which it, which was brutal. I'm so glad that we don't have to go to Atlantic City this yeah. year. My feet, I think, are still recovering a and little bit. Jams are still, think, actually, he still has scars. I I think everyone's soul <laughs> broke a little in that tournament. You know, like it's just, like the AVP's Navy Seal Hell Week, dude. Yeah, for real. Like you watch those clips on like uh, professional bodybuilder tries Marine training. You know, and you're just like, and he's just like at the end of it, just like you know, like. I feel like everybody. <laughs> dude, I saw David Lee at Spike Fest like the next weekend, yeah. and he was like, ooh, 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 <laughs> like this large, gigantic man is just like gingerly walking through the sands with with bandaged feet. Yeah, I was like, ooh, that's rough. Um, but the um, Dave, the the announcer, Dave Shaw. Yeah, he 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 loved the word monster. That okay. that that tournament. Yeah. So you would be, you know, we'd be in the players' tent, and all you could hear from from court was from like stadium court was monster block, yeah, monster pass. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> not sure how that one quite equates. Monster dig, monster serve. Yeah, like I'm okay. I don't know if you can describe every play. Right. You know, monster high five. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, yeah. I mean, some guys do high five better than others, but I don't know if you can classify <laughs> as a monster high five. Yeah. You know, but it is nice to like watch 
you know, you commentating and have, it almost seems like the right word kind of comes out yeah. when it needs to, if that it, makes uh, sense. Yeah. It's commentating, I think is one, one of my favorite things that I do now. It was funny after we lost yeah. to Miami, came back and then I, I called Clayton who does the, okay. he assigns us our matches and stuff. He said, Hey, if you need any subs for La Paz, my weekend actually <laughs> opened up unexpectedly. He said, yeah, we're, we're full, but then I think Carrie Potter, uh, had to bail like last second for who's La Paz also matches. great. Carrie Potter is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I and, really like um, her work. And so I did that. And afterwards I was talking to Laney. I was like, I get just as much of kind of an adrenaline rush from mm-hmm. commentating because mm-hmm. live television is freaking hard. Like as a yes. writer, yeah. I have as much time in the world mm-hmm. to find the right word. You have certain deadlines. Like yeah. at University of Maryland, we'd have drills where we'd have to write a story in 15 minutes. You get five <laughs> words. And if you get if you, name spelled wrong, fact wrong, stat yeah. wrong, zero. And so we learned We're, to find the right word on deadline, but okay. to find it okay. on audio yeah, it's hard. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that takes so now when I'm watching NC like March Madness, mm-hmm. I'm watching NBA, I'm really listening yeah. to Jim Nance. Yeah, and yeah. I watch SVP and I just watch how they conduct their just the way that they speak and yeah. their cadence and their yeah. rhythm and how excited they can get. And then you get like the Gus Johnsons who are screaming and then yeah. you get the dick fried towels. And it's been really fun to learn a whole new skill set. I, I was gonna say, it. and you're doing great at it, which is phenomenal to watch. It's also so interesting because you are very articulate, which a lot of the like FIVB like announcers can be. But like, yeah, you'll listen to like a Dick Vitale or um, is it uh, Bill Walton? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like it's just, <laughs> and I love the energy. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. you know, but it's just so hard because like the enunciation isn't quite there and yeah. that's a skill in and of itself. Yeah. And it's not easy. Right. And so especially I, like, you know, the guy... So Dave Shaw, who is the AVP America, right? like tour series. And he's great. MC. And he's great. And, and I don't mean that facetiously about yeah. the monster yeah. stuff. I just thought it was funny yeah. at, in that for that tournament. But they're doing all day. Yeah. And so sometimes I, I'll get stuck on certain words and yes. phrases. Yeah, and then yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. in there, you're like, I this is the fifth match of the day and I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't think of it. My brain's gone. <laughs> like I can't think of a new one. So I've gotten in that kind of monster, fantastic, phenomenal, magnificent, you know, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. You know, when I commentate with any of the UK guys, like yeah. I walk up, oh, what a brilliant match. And then he's like, stop it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, even even sometimes too, I'll talk to like Sean, Sean Cook. Yeah. I mean, obviously from Scotland and you had him on the show. Um, but even he has some some words that like, they're just, I don't know what it is, but like, especially for like Southern California, like we have our dialect, our, yeah. you know, Lisa says I have a California accent and I'm like, I don't, I don't hear it. Yeah. But then I'll start talking to like another volleyball player, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, you, you really held on that word a long time there, bud. You know, uh, I'm from California. What's up, my guy? You know, <laughs> Sean does it great too. Sean does that one phenomenal. He's so good. I'm from Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he like he'll like say a word and like it won't necessarily translate. Yeah. Like it will say maybe like yeah something about heaps, and I'm like, I know what you're saying. But it's not the word that I would use, you know what I mean, yeah. for that. Like, like I maybe just use a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's so fascinating also, too, to hear all the different, you know, like Harry Potter would say things a different way than yeah. you would say things a different way than, you know, the UK guys. Because uh, I don't know who did the King of the Court uh, commentating. Louis Lett is usually the King of the Court. He's great. Yeah. He's phenomenal. I love Louis. <laughs> and I think he's a good compliment to Rich because yeah. Rich doesn't say much. Like I was watching, I think it was Maldives and <laughs> he was commentating and like really good back and play, back and forth play. Rich didn't say anything the entire play. Dude, like Yahtzee's a line ball. He's like, what a swing down the line. <laughs> that was it. And I was like, I mean, you're letting the players play like for sure, you know? Yeah. But he's just got a very, like, he's just got a very specific tone and the way that he commentates, yeah. which I think is so funny as well. And commentating with Rich is hysterical, <laughs> dude. Because especially because me and Rich are pretty good friends, and yeah. we we've commentated together yeah. a fair amount. And and so I'll say something, and he will just drop the funniest one liner out of like I won't mm-hmm. see it coming at all. Yeah. And it takes everything in me to keep from like snorting and laughing into the mic, and <laughs> trying to hold it together. It's so funny. So in Chicago. Uh, I went back and watched our video, uh, and it and it resonated. But I met Rich and Josh Claysbrook yeah. at uh, I think it was called like Velvet Taco okay. in Chicago. If you haven't been there, it's phenomenal. The shrimp and grits taco was it's I think it's the best taco <laughs> I've ever had. 
It was like, <laughs> it shouldn't have been, it had no right to be as good as it was. a California guy to go to Chicago and get Mexican and no, say it's the best taco. That's, that's, that's It was, no, it was phenomenal. It was great. And Rich was like, you got to get it. Like, you know, I'm ordering it for you. That's yeah. how good it is. And he was right. So Rich, shout out. That was great. Um, but he, he was recanting the story about how he was commentating our game against Theo and came, which we got destroyed. Like we got crushed. And uh, they were talking about uh, Hagen and I both being from Southern California, but that um, Hagen looks the part, long, yeah. flowing, blonde hair. Um, and Rich dropped a one-liner on Dane Blanton <laughs> and goes, uh, yeah, uh, Hagen, Hagen's doing the part for Southern California, but uh, Jake looks like, he, looks like he's auditioning for a part on 24. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the lines I'm talking about. So apparently Dane Blanton was just like 14 serving nine and like just was like, nope, not even touching that with a 10 foot pole. So Rich is recanting this to me at like Velvet Taco. And I'm like, yeah, that's hilarious. Dude, yeah. I watch it again. So I'm lifting my garage. We have a TV. I put it on again. I'm listening to the audio. I stop it, record it, and send it to my wife yeah. and was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, okay, that was really good. But the best part was the fact that Dane couldn't touch it because yeah. he was like, nope, not yep. going there. Because yeah. he's actually like oh doing commentating for additional stuff as well. I thought he was doing Pac-12 Network, network or something like that. Yeah, well, I think he's uh, he's with NBC, so wherever okay. NBC sends him, okay. he, he does. <laughs> yeah, so he's not touching that one. <laughs> yeah, steer clear. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny. Like just those one liners. I'm just like, that was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and it's, he's so quick with it. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. Dude, yeah. His wit is so fast and you just don't see it coming. <laughs> Cause it's one thing, like it's, it is hard to think of the right things to say about the actual play, let yep. alone think of the perfect one liner to drop. Mm -hmm. That'll just have you in stitches. Yeah. And you think with a guy <laughs> with that much muscle, he wouldn't have a lot upstairs, but he really is a smart dude. Yeah. His vocabulary is yeah. wide ranging. It's yeah. impressive. Like he's and, a smart dude. Yeah, and he can bench a lot. I bet. <laughs> a lot. I've never seen it. I haven't witnessed a Rich Lamborn weightlifting session in person. I, th I feel like it'd be glorious. <laughs> I feel like he and Hagen, I would just want to see those guys like yeah. drop into Venice and just see what happens. Yeah. You know, I feel like they would fit in. Be like, hey, bud, what's up? Hagen is, yeah, Hagen especially because Hagen has like the fanny pack, you know, yeah. the neon hats and stuff. Oh, like he, a little he fedora thing as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, one ear pod in, <laughs> one ear pod in. <laughs> I told him in, uh, I told him in Central Florida, I was like, because he would, he would train with it in. And I was like, I was like, you should just wear that for Central Florida. Yeah. Like, wear the fanny pack, wear the hat, wear the, you know, wear the air, AirPod. He's like, oh, I don't really, you know. And I was like, what are they going to do? Like, stop you to check yeah. your phone to see if you're on the call with your dad? Yeah. Like, just wear it, dude. It'd be hilarious. Yeah. Um, it's like hardball with the pitcher has the headphones in. Yeah. yeah. When you call me big <laughs> pop. But that's what Hank is doing in Tavares, Florida. <laughs> dude, it was, it was hilarious. Yeah, the first time we trained and he had the AirPod in, I was like... That's hilarious. I was like, this is a vibe. All right. Yeah. I thought I thought they were going to come out, you know, eventually. Like, we get past, like, standing or, like, warm-up the whole time. Nope. I was like, is it me? It was not me. <laughs> it was just a, you know, it was like an experience. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Like, yeah. we're doing that. <laughs> no, it was funny, too, because, like, you know, every player kind of has their own, their own thing. Yeah. Their own, like, this is, this is the way that they're going to go about doing the thing that they love, mm -hmm. you know? And you can say that about most people, about most hobbies or things that they do. I yeah. mean, even work. You yeah. probably work in a similar manner. You work at the same times. You write. Yeah. You find your routines. Yeah. And um, he just like, he, he did he did those things meticulously. You know, like, we'd like hey, we, you know, we, we'd play at 10 or whatever. He's like, all right, let's get down there at 7. Let's go on, like, let's get our first sweat in. Let's go get some food. Let's go hit the trainer. And then, like, let's warm up. Yeah. I had never done it before. I was like, oh, this is great. Now Miami, same thing, yeah. you know, I'm like, all right, play at 10. I'm going to get down there at seven. going to go do my first run, do some yoga, go eat, go do the thing. Like by the time we got to game time, I was like, all right, you're primed. Feel good. Yeah. Um, we played Chicago. We got geez, just destroyed by Theo and, and came. That was your first round, right? That was our first round. Yeah, yeah. That was our first round. So we came in as a 16 seed. Okay. Now, mind you, this is the second time we had come in as a 16 seed. Like, obviously, the first one was against uh, your co-host, and right. that worked out better. Damn it, he should be here. That worked out better for us. Um, 
but yeah, Theo and Kane just like they're just so long and they hit that flat middle like yeah. super well and quick. So they kind of put it on us pretty good. Um, but after the match, uh, Hagen was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go do my own thing tonight." It's like, cool, dude. Yeah, all right, cool. That's actually why I was at Velvet Taco. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> shrimp and get ta- shrimp and grit tacos with uh, Rich and, and Josh. Uh, dude came back the next day, crushed through three games, got into Sunday, crushed. I mean, we didn't crush Timmy and Kyle. We, I, think match. We, I think we beat them 15 13. Yeah. We didn't crush them. Um, gosh, they're so good. Yeah. And gosh, all, they're playing, and really they're well. playing at an even higher level, especially Tim. Yeah. You know, Tim was playing really well at the end of last year, yeah. and he's now yeah. made that another level, I think. He really has. Like, you just the speed, you can tell, like, the speed at which the ball is moving. Yeah. It just gets on blockers faster than they expect it. It's getting on diggers faster than they expect it. And it's just, you know, because he doesn't really, he's not really powering through. Yeah. It's just, it's just on you kind of faster. Yeah. You know, like there are some guys that have just a fat shoulder. Yeah. And you're like, okay. You know, like Paul, when Paul gets a hold of one, you're like, okay. Yeah. I was thinking uh, playing with Wyatt. This weekend. Oh yes! I mean the ball just because he comes in like nice, lazy, mm-hmm. real Hawaiian approach, and then he just like <laughs> boom! I'm like Jesus, why? How'd, you didn't even yeah. approach. You yeah, walked. yeah. It's literally it's just like all step close and just all whatever, you know, just powering through shoulder wise. Because like I don't have a big shoulder. I just my ball kind of gets on people fast. Yeah, you got that long <laughs> whip. It just like dangle, dangle, dangle. <laughs> And I'm like, damn. It's fun to set. It's fun to set different people. Like yeah. Setting you was such a unique experience the other day. So I was like, I've never seen someone with arms that long and with an arm swing like that where you're like, you're under the ball, but still like powering, whipping through. Yeah. Like, that was awesome. It's, and you have to like, you have to find kind of the thing that, that sets you apart. You know, like when you play CBVAs at a high level or you're coming up, you're a younger guy, you, you don't really have the confidence of like, I do this thing very well. Yeah. You know, but you look at some of the younger guys coming up or you look at like, you know, people talk about Miles Partain and what's the first thing that they talk about? His jump setting. Jump setting and his awesome. defense. Yeah, his defense. You know, and like you, people are like visually, they see the jump setting, they see the optioning. But then you kind of really talk to like the high level guys and you're like, dude, his defense, like he's just scooping into these like areas that he shouldn't be yeah he has no right to be in yeah and he's just in that area you know and it's like i mean even hagan like hagan has a huge shoulder like really good feet to ball and just like really good really good wrist like every guy kind of has their own thing but one of the things that like really sets a guy like tim and kyle into that next level is they kind of find their thing that makes them elite yeah and then they just do it Mm -hmm. repeatedly I mean, all the time, too. Yeah. It's not like they're going to the thing that makes them elite. And then they're going like, all right, cool. That worked on that. That worked on that one play. Like, uh, this next one, I'm going to, like, go to something else. I mean, it just so happened, too, that Todd Raji had, like, four of those things. (laughs) You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, most dudes, like, you know, if you give me me two feet of line, I want to hit it line. Right. Like, that's one of the things. Like, (laughs) I, I mean, if I can, if I can hit the ball line. Even if I can't hit the ball line, I'm still going to try <laughs> because it's just in my head is one of the things that I feel like I do that thing yeah. elite, you know? Um, and it's funny. There's a, there's a part when I was, t- there was a part of the Hermosa game where we played against Try and Trevor and someone from, I was TD like, uh, I was tournament directing at Will Rogers, like the next weekend or the weekend after. Yeah. Um, and someone came up to me. And it was like, hey, loved watching your game, like super fun. Like it was cool because we we know you as like the TD for right. Will Rogers. Like that's awesome. Um, and they were like, you took like a line swing and you like yelled at the fans like you were like mad. And I was like, yeah, he gave me like, they gave me like four feet of line. <laughs> Trevor wasn't even standing there. I was <laughs> pissed off that they think I'm that bad <laughs> that like they're giving me four feet of line, you know? Like I was, I was legitimately angry at them for not being, not, you know, there, you know? Right. Um, then it's funny cause we played the Taylors and they didn't give me <laughs> three inches of line, you know, <laughs> first play, like first or third, third play of the game. I go up and like, they gave me, they, they show me the three block and I try to rip this line ball and I get housed. I'm pretty sure 
it hits off my shoulder, goes across the net, and Taylor like scoops it. We finish the play out. We go into serve receive, and I, I like turn to Hagen. I was like, okay, they did their scouting. Yeah. And Taylor's Tom, good. Sander has that great outside the body move too. So strong. Yeah. It's like some of these guys and their hands are just like just like cuff it. I don't have like the strongest hands. <laughs> you know, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm alright with that. Yeah. Got soft hands. Um, but some of these dudes just like they're monsters. It's huge. Like Theo's hands are so long. Billy Kalinsky has like the oh longest my gosh, hands. Catcher's mitts, dude. Like hitting a line shot, and I'm like, oh, it's clean. Like, yeah, no, there's no way. And Bill, when he's pulling, like you hit it. I'm like, yeah, I just got a decent one. He just like mangles this thing and like, <laughs> like flicks it back. I'm like, but how did you? Damn it, Bill! It's done to be like 400 times. I still haven't learned. Who did? Uh, you was you and Wyatt, and who was I playing with? Um, I can't remember who I was playing with off the top of my head. But oh, Tim. Me and it was Tim. Tim. It was Tim. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So it was Tim. You pulled. And Tim, uh, Tim tried to do the, you know, I'm going to put it on the puller f- fast. Yeah. And you like, you know, I don't know, whatever your, a weird, one whatever. of your pulling chronicle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> style like yeah. digs, you know. And, uh, and he goes and he's like, ah, I just need to, you know, I think I need to move the ball a little bit. And I was like, you know, I think that was okay. You know, you can do things a little differently. There's just like a list of guys. That when they pull, I don't hit at them. <laughs> yeah. Travis is right there on that list <laughs> w- with uh, Chase Budinger. Chase um, is good. And, and try. Yeah. I was like, Theo's one of their, Theo's up there too. Yeah. Sneaky too because he doesn't do it much. Yeah, he does not do it much. But when he does and then you put it on him kind of fast, he just, I don't know. Theo's like, funky because he like, it's weird. I mean, he'll put them together and like kind of. I don't even know. It's not a tomahawk. It's like this open hand, like <laughs> Santa Cruz old man thing. It's just like pop, perfect. He he spent we we I was training with Theo one time and uh, he spent an entire training yelling at me because when I overhand pass, you did like the taco. Every okay, so okay, so okay, <laughs> I have okay, <laughs> I had a lot of time in Santa Cruz and so I actually I turn my platform so like I call when a lot of people are like hey how do you like how do you pass my bottom pass I always call it like a shovel. Because yeah. I flare my hands out as much as okay. I can to just turn it into, you know, kind of like a, a shovel. It yeah. looks like a shovel. But it just gives you more surface area. Yeah. But then I essentially just turn that into there. Yeah. And then it kind of just, you can kind of just like from there. Yeah. But it's just a reverse platform. Right. It's amazing. And that, it makes sense. It's easy to teach that too. Exactly. And it like, you know, and a lot of people do, a lot of people will t- teach like, you know, straight, you know, ahead. It's kind of yeah. like shooting a basketball though. Like if you put it straight in front of your face. Yeah. You can't see the ball. So I teach people to uh, to keep their head on the path of the ball and then just move their head and keep their platform there. Mm-hmm. So that's usually like – so Theo has spent the entire training session going like, you need to open your hands because you have more control. Yeah, like that right there. That's the Theo. He's like, he's yeah. like you just – you put them together like this. And I think – I don't know. I feel like John Hyden taught him that or something. Like, you know what I mean? One of those old school guys <laughs> yeah. who just like are so crafty and like, you know, just – I don't even know if John Hyden does it. So if you don't if you don't do it, John, then I'm sorry. But I just feel like it was one of those old school guys who was like, yeah. And so every time he passes, he just like, yeah, it's perfect. It it's is. great. It's soft. And it's funny because you can tell like the I think you can tell the basketball players. Me, <laughs> Chase, and Bill all dig a really similar way where we'll I use the net as a shield, so I will get low. Ooh. So if you use the net as a shield, okay then your trajectory of the pull dig is always going to be going up oh, because you are down yeah. and the, the ball is going to be coming down at you. But I'm always with my hands open mm-hmm. as if I'm essentially catching a basketball yeah. or, or something like that. And that's Chase does it. He's a little bit more straight up than I am because he's just such a freak athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bill, if you watch, he'll backpedal and Tim Bomgren the same yeah. way where it's just like – it's just open hands. Yeah. Whereas like the more traditional volleyball players are doing the reverse platform yeah. or like the high, high Duke. And yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Cause that's where I get caught. Like a lot of people will, uh, will give me a hard time or rather be like, well, how did you do that? Where like, I'll get stuck, you know, kind of like gatoring, yeah. like backpedaling and, and kind of just gator it. Yeah. Um, or you get the occasional, like one hand gets stuck. So I'll like karate chop the ball. <laughs> I have legitimately karate chopped digs that were like perfect. Yeah. And my partner's just like, what? Don't ask. 
it's just complete luck. I think it. Well, I think it's just a lifetime of playing volleyball. Because you you grew up in Santa Cruz, right? No, I actually grew up in Santa Clarita, where Magic Mountain is. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so that's where Delaney's parents live. Yeah, or used to live. Yeah, you uh, you, you married into like royalty, volleyball royalty, because her, her mom played. It's yeah, they met. And, yeah, at a like a turn, an open in New Jersey that they both won. Oh, I mean, yeah, even better. I know. Like that, yeah, but no, uh, Valencia <laughs> is like the powerhouse of one of the powerhouses of. Like the essentially the valley, like San Fernando Valley into, you know, sort of the northern part of LA County. Yeah. The men's Val- Valencia team, like they had. His dad coached that team that won, like, I think they didn't lose a match for 11 years. Dude, uh, yeah. I played against that team. <laughs> I, li- I was in high school dad. and I played against <laughs> yeah. that. I played against an iteration of that team. It was like, uh, it was like Tony Kerr, uh, Kevin Kerr before they went to UCLA. Yeah. Um, and all their basketball friends that they just recruited. Dude, we got destroyed like our coach was like like hey come on like this is like this is the time yeah and we get destroyed in three and he's like yeah i mean they're a good team yeah like come on dude they haven't lost a game in like yeah. they haven't lost a uh a uh conference game in 11 years yeah. i mean it was literally i mean 11 i think 11 years it was funny because delaney's sister just got married and we watched this little mockumentary that they did on the team <laughs> okay and her dad is in the video, like a young Mark Nuts, and he's like, I don't want to call it a dynasty, but... Oh, it was. It's a dynasty. <laughs> it was, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was... They were they were just nuts. I mean, they... I mean, part of it, too, was that a lot of those guys played basketball together. Yeah. Uh, youth basketball. And then it turned into, like, hey, you know, would you want to come try out for volleyball and, like, do the thing? So, yeah, I mean, from Tony Kerr... And then to Kevin, and then to Jamie Kerr, like the, the Kerr brothers were ridiculous yeah. for for why. But the women's side was just as good. Yeah, the women's side was nuts. Um, yeah. So I actually knew Delaney. For, I've I've known Delaney for a long time. Um, That's hilarious. We actually, I came down from Santa Cruz one time. We played co-ed with her dad, her brother. Yeah, she called you uh, Santa Cruz Jake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that yeah that, that checks out. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so I'd come down to I'd come down to Santa Clarita from Santa Cruz, and then I would head out to like Santa Barbara and play with like uh, Matt Jones and uh, okay. Cervantes brothers and uh, Mike Stewart um, for a while because uh, it was always tough to get down to like Santa Monica, right. the South Bay. So that's why we wanted to move down here because it was so hard to get there from like Santa Clarita or like Ventura when we were out there, of yeah. course. So. Um, but yeah, so I, I actually went to school, I w- went to Santa Clarita, uh, went to Saugus High, then went to Pierce College, okay. uh, which is a junior, junior college. Yeah. I think Mayer, uh, Mayer coached there. I think, I think Johnny, Oh, maybe. So Johnny Mayer coached at Santa Monica. I think Johnny Mayer played at Pierce. Yeah, that might be right. He, so yeah. he, so my coach, uh, was actually a guy named Eddie Stanislavski, and he coached with Bo Daniels, um, and Bo Daniels was an All-American setter at Pepperdine. Okay. He was sick. Bo he Daniels was, sounds like the quarterback for Ole Miss. That's dude, he was, from, he was from Texas. <laughs> okay, so he was sense. He was from Texas, and he would always, like, he'd always tell us stories about how he got made fun of because he played volleyball while everyone else played football. Yeah. And he was like, his dad was just this really big, gruff, like, dude. And he's like, yeah, like... So when he was coaching us, it was no nonsense. Like yeah. his coach on ones were the worst. The only <laughs> coach on one I ever saw him stop early was because he tossed a ball short and the, the guy, every effort dove in, hit off his knuckles and then hit a uh, bow in the, his nuts. Oh, tough. And so he had to actually physically stop doing the coach on one, but that was the only coach on one I ever saw him stop early. <laughs> He was he was awesome. He was awesome. But I think Johnny Mayer played around the same time yeah. with them and then um, <clears throat> obviously went on to Pepperdine. I think he's one of the only collegiate players who played right side, set, and played libero. Really? Someone fact check that. Cause, I mean, that, that checks out to me. Yeah. Johnny Mayer is <laughs> <He's incredible>. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. um, the nicest guy, too. He would talk trash to people on the beach and, like, so he'd tool you on purpose. And he'd be like, oh, he almost had me. Like. God, I just, <laughs> oh, you know, like, um, but so you played at Pierce, played at Pierce. And then from Pierce, um, had looked at like Long Beach Pacific when they had a program, uh, rip Pacific Tiger tigers. Um, <laughs> and then had looked at like Irvine, but you know, I had played outside and libero 
and there were so many combo players yeah that it didn't didn't really work out um for those colleges but then uc santa cruz were like hey so bo actually knew jonah they were both texas guys okay so jonah was coaching at the time then jonah went over to pacific um before todd hollenbeck took over at uc santa cruz so jonah actually recruited me and bo was like jonah's great you'll love him so right as i got there he left for pacific so that was sad <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a big bummer but it was awesome because like D3 is like, I, I, I call D3 like miniature volleyball. Mm -hmm. All the dudes can do everything the D1 players can. Yeah. They're just small. Yeah. You know, like I was the only, like, I was the only guy who looked like he could have played D1. Yeah. You're what, like six, 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 seven? Six, five. Six, five. But yeah, like six, Damn, five and so change. long though. I know. So yeah, exactly. You're like you're six, seven. <laughs> Damn. I will say, I don't know if I have it on video, but I did one hand Kong block Steve Irwin when we played against Stanford. Nice. So I got that. And that, that's a big tree. I mean, that yeah. ball fell hard. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got destroyed. Um, yeah. But like our outsides were like six foot. Okay. But they jumped well. Yeah. And just crushed the ball. Actually, Jake Lindell. Uh, okay. I played with Jake Lindell at the time. Um, and he still does the same thing that he did indoor that he does now. Just smooth. So smooth. So smooth. Man. Really good ball control. Just like has a really good idea of what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, like hitting knuckle poke shots into the good space and then like encouraging the defender to like go get it because he knows that there's no way the defender can go get it. Yeah. I'm like that's next level <laughs> trash talk and I love it. I'm here for it. Um, but yeah, so then went up to Santa Cruz and, and played uh, played up in Santa Cruz for a couple years, uh, but then stayed for like five years. Okay. So yeah, then but then a lot of people knew me from Santa Cruz. So yeah, I kind of became Santa, Santa, Santa Cruz Jake. Jake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where did that put you... On the timeline, because I feel like we're we're about the same age. How old are you? Thirty four. Okay, so I'm thirty two. Okay. So that would have been what, like twenty fourteen? You're probably up there. Twenty, yeah. Later. So I was there from like twenty. I want to say twenty ten to like twenty fifteen. Okay. So, so I you, would. You must have moved back about the same time that I moved out here. Yeah. So yeah, because I think we. I mean, we met in in Huntington, and I think you had like just gotten there. Yeah, because I, I moved in September of twenty. 15. I think I had gone down in the summer. So I was actually with, uh, my grandparents had a house in Mission Viejo. Okay. So I was in Mission Viejo for a, a bit of time. Um, cause they also have, um, their, their world travelers, like they've been all over the place, but they had an RV where they had like an RV, like, I don't know, old person's like resort yeah. in Palm Springs like type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. a bunch of like Canadians come down apparently. <laughs> it's like, because I guess in Canada you have to live in your house for like six months. And then so like a bunch of Canadians would live up in Canada for six months, but then live in Palm Springs for the other six months. Okay. So my grandparents had a house in Michigan, but then they'd go live out there for six okay. months. Um, but so I was able to, um, they were great. They were phenomenal, very welcoming. So I was able to kind of settle myself there. Um, and play a bunch in Corona Del Mar, Huntington, yeah. um, Dana Point. Um, it's actually where I met. I, and I played, I coached actually down, uh, I think it was Costa Mesa. Okay. Down in like San Diego, like uh, Encinitas area. Okay. So I was actually training a lot with like Mike Brunstein, Paul Ariza, yeah. um, Derek Olson. That was when like that Huntington, that Orange County area was strong. It was really good. It was really good. Um yeah, Ty Loomis and, and Ed were, were were running the circuit for like two years, something like that. Yeah, and they were just they were the worst to train against too because they would, you're with them, you're with them, you're with them. You get to like eighteen, seventeen, and then all of a sudden, like Ty Loomis like looks a little angrier. And you're like, what? And then they beat you nineteen or twenty one yeah, nineteen. Like, and you're boom, like, boom, three aces. <laughs> what? <laughs> but like Ty Trambley being down there, Russ Marchuka. Obviously, I, I mean, you know, because we we're all down there. Yeah, but. That was cool. Like the pier, everyone just kind of go. Mm -hmm. And Casey and Jake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And Casey and Jake were just phenomenal. And they kind of like, they had a good, they had such a good vibe too. I remember playing like King of the Court standing game with Casey one time. Yeah. And just talking smack to us, like, like willing us to be better, you yeah. know, than we actually were at the time. Yeah. Um, which was great. Um, you know, he's like. I just, I vividly remember too. He's like, I bet I can nail a $20 bill to that and no one will beat me to take that $20 bill off the wall. <laughs> I was just like, you're probably right, dude. <laughs> you're probably right. Um, but yeah, they, they were phenomenal. 
Um, so yeah, that's, so I was in, I was there probably 2015 ish to like 2016 or 2017. Yeah. So, cause I had played with Brunstein and made a little bit of a run actually funny enough. Cause I'm playing with Tim Baumgren in new Orleans. I talked to Tim when we were, we were talking about playing and I was like, do you remember playing me in new Orleans? And he's like, no. And I was like, sick. Cause it was like 2015 or something like yeah. that. And I was like, you beat us. You beat me because they served me every ball. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't Mike Brunsting's fault. Mike, you did great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have hit all those catch shots. Uh, Mike, or, uh, they beat us 21-11, 21-12. Yeah. They took a third, though, that tournament, I think. Oh, they beat Tim, Phil and Rosie in the first round. Tim goes, that was the best tournament we played. And I was like, <laughs> glad I was on that journney with you. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Glad so fun. Know. Dude, I just remember hitting four cut shots. And uh, I think I think Tim's brother's name is Brian. Yeah. So yeah, Brian lays out one hand dig, perfect up, and obviously Tim's lefty just <clears throat> knocks it over on two. Pretty. It felt like before I even landed, hit the cut shot, and I'm like in the air, like watching Tim just ba boom. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, I happened, it happened the first two times, and I was like, I probably should stop cutting the ball. And it happened the third time, and I was like, okay, that you forgot. And then the fourth time, I was like, okay, now. Now you're just being a little silly. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> you know, and now, now, like, you know, as you progress through in your career too, you're like, now I pretty much don't hit a lot of cut shots. Yeah. A lot of them just come out as jumbos. So we'll be watching film because I always watch film with, with Lisa. Yeah. Because I'll be putting on, um, she's working on some CBVA or, or content yeah. creation type stuff. And I'll, I'll put the volleyball on because I'm sure you and Delaney are similar where you just watch a ton of volleyball. Yeah, well, I am. Delaney actually, she hates watching volleyball. She won't. Oh, really? Yeah. She okay. She's like, ah, you know, I could take it or leave it. But I'm like you, where I, I'm just super volleyball nerd. I love day. it. Yeah, I love and it. And I know you do because you'll text me. You'll know that I'm watching like some random match in like a Dubai women's qualifier, and you're like, "Did you see that play?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I saw Japan's twos against Austria's threes. I love it, dude. <laughs> I love it. Like watching. Uh, I was texting. I've been texting with uh, Charlie Saragusa all yeah. of last week because they played the futures. Him and mm-hmm. Jordan. Um, Congrats to them. Bronze yeah, medal. absolutely. Bronze medal is great. Um, Charlie tried to hit us with, tried to hit me with the like, ah, I would have, you know, I was like, shh, you took a bronze, brother. Yeah. Like, yeah, everyone wants to win a tournament. Yeah. You know, if you post, uh, not the finish we wanted, oh, I will. And Theo will fly out and, and wrangle him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Theo <laughs> hates that. Yeah. Theo's like, of course, everyone wants to win. Like, right. duh. Um, but no, Charlie was great. Like, I just, I loved watching all of their games. Um, and would text him afterwards and, and, um, and so it's fun to watch like the guys that you're playing with Mm -hmm. who are able to go travel and do all those things. Even if it's a futures, like, um, we got Ben and Mark Bucknum playing in Tahiti. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and Jordan, uh, Ian and Ian and Jake, who took a ninth in Miami, which good for them. And uh, Marty. A Rob and Marty. Yeah. So a ton of us teams, um, which is great. I'm pretty sure two of them are in the quality. Well, no, so it was three of them should have been, but there were, I think, I want to say there were 21 teams. And so you only had one, like our three qualifier teams got bied in. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that, yeah, because uh, <clears throat> two of the Canadian guys that played the Will Rogers tournament, um, uh, Tynan and Eric. Eric Gerard. Gerard. And, and, uh, Ty- I, don't, I, don't, Tynan, I never um, met his partner. Yeah, I, it's T-Y-N-A-N. Um, they're both super nice, of course, Canadians. Um <laughs> But they had to play, they were the 4-5 seed with okay. the Germans. So literally a Canadian team who flew out there and a German team that flew out there had to play as the last qualifier spot to get in. And one of those teams had to get out. Oh, and I was like, At least oh. you're in Tahiti. I, yeah, I, was, like, I was like, at least man. you can go get a Mai Tai and just <laughs> yeah. kind of kick it. Like, I mean, um, but it's cool to watch the, it's cool to watch the U.S. men because obviously the women have such a strong pipeline. Yeah which is great. Um, and not to say the women, not just not to say that the men aren't playing well. Like I think Theo and Trevor are obviously playing well. Try and came are looking good. I'm interested to see how the Taylors look in, um, what's the first one? It's not Sakurama. It's a Pema. Oh, okay. It's a Pema, Sakurama, week off, Uberland, yeah. And so like, obviously Miles and Andy, Miles and Chase and the Taylors are in the qualifier. And I think Evan and Logan are going out there too. Yeah, for the first one, the and first. I believe, yeah, and then they're playing yeah. New Orleans for the second one. Um, so it'll be fun to see how they 
they progress, but the women are just looking so strong. Like it's it's crazy. I mean, you look at uh, like AVP New Orleans. I mean, that's like a baby world championship <laughs> yeah. because all of our best women are coming back. Yeah, and then you have Brandy and Mel, mm-hmm. and Pavin's playing with Stockman. And yeah. it's like whoa. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> the women's side, like yeah, the fact that the fact that there are, I think there's what one or two teams that are over kind of that seven thousand point threshold that a lot of teams look at for new orleans and uh they're in the qualifier yeah you know, molly, and molly are like 7200 yeah in the qualifier. yeah i was gonna say good Whoa. friend molly turner like <laughs> yeah. i'm like man that is brutal yeah um so it's you know it's interesting to to see how the progression will be because you really do want to see the men's side begin to succeed a, a bit more yeah um and not to say it's not coming obviously theo and came took a was it fourth in world champs fourth in world champs yeah. we've had the last i think three world champs we've had a team finish fourth we had oh yeah because theo and nick took fourth in 2015 okay and uh where was it the hague yes yeah yeah the most epic final i think in beach volleyball history is that world champs alison bruno against numerador Varenhorst. oh it's like the best third set i've ever watched what was the there was one you did recently though um you keep calling him Robbie. Rob, Robbie Musin. Yeah, yeah. Him and Alex against Poland. That's in, what it was. Uh, Paris. 29 27 <laughs> in the third. Brother, I watched <sighs> that whole thing and was on pins and needles the entire time. Yeah. And I didn't even have a stake in the game. Yeah. It was incredible to watch. Like, I wish I still had the whoop so I could see what my heart rate would do when I'm commentating that stuff. Because I yeah, get, yeah, like, yeah. empathetic adrenaline. Yes, I'm yeah, like, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. the craziest. <laughs> Side out match I've ever seen in my life. I just remember watching Brill, and there was one long rally, um, and if the Netherlands dudes are just absolute machines. Yeah, like I'm sure if you cut into them, they are actually robots. Like those guys are just like, <laughs> yeah. they guys are just machines. Um, but Brill, there were just a couple rallies where like the the rally would end, and Brill just hands on knees, like <gasps> you yep. could just tell he was struggling. You just know, getting served. Every single ball. Robbie's just standing at the net like, I will destroy you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. just hilarious. And I was like, ooh, that was... I mean, you, but you can tell, too. The nice thing, too, is that... And I, the thing I, I kind of like about the international game when watching is that there is this huge amount of respect for yeah. your opponent. Yeah. Um, which I know, like, everyone kind of loves the drama. You know, I get that. But at the same time, it's that... That level of respect for your opponent that they're trying just as hard as you are, you know, like no one's taking a playoff or no one's a thing. Although sometimes I swear it looks like uh, Losiak is just like, yeah, I'm done with this play. Yeah. High line, not in the mood. Yeah. (laughs) It's a good shot. You yeah. know, the old defender, like, yep. that's a good shot. You know, yeah. as the as the blockers, like, turn around, like, come on, yeah. just take a step, you know, just lean, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, you don't even have to step, you don't have to make a move, just yeah. go, you know. Um, and so it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. I think it's fun to watch that, that side of it. Um, because obviously the domestic tour is, it's going to be inherently different. Yeah. I went down that rabbit hole again and found myself into uh, the top 10 German domestic tour highlights. <laughs> How did I even get there? <laughs> did I watch the whole thing? You bet your butt I did. Absolutely. Loved it. Had no idea who it was. It was just watching the German domestic tour for Beach. Yeah. James Shaw, Molly Turner, uh, Molly Turner's fiance is is uh, playing in Germany. So I sent him a text and I was like, if you ever find yourself with a wild card, yeah. I'll go play with you. Heck yeah. That'd just, be fun. Yeah, it would be amazing, you know? Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen, but good try. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. I just love, I just yeah. love watching. So it's funny because uh, Lisa will watch with me. So I'll turn it on. And I'll be like, uh, it didn't feel like the greatest block, you know, because I've been working with Theo a lot last year um, into this year uh, a bit just on blocking because I've always considered myself sort of little. I've always kind of had a little mindset yeah. like. I like when it comes to passing and setting and attacking, like I've always considered myself a little player. Yeah. Um, which is funny because both you and Tim in training the other day were like, your line You're shot huge. was so high. Yeah. I was like, and your block. Some of the swats you had, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all Theo. That's all Theo for sure. Because like 
we we just had a training session the other day where I was working with him and he was like, yeah, I'm trying to work on blocking like uh, Borman um, and DeGroot. Yeah. Um, Borman's is freaking good. He, he was like, I hit like four line shots and he's just, no, he's, so he's reaching straight up and down. Yeah. Um, you know, and if Theo chisels down the side, it's probably a kill, but he just he's super high, just in his face. Like, you know, I'm taking this spot away. And I was like, okay, watching Kyle, Kyle's been blocking like that a lot yeah. recently. Um, I love, I love that too. Like I love trying to find what makes someone good, what makes yeah. someone who they are, you know? Um, and that's why it was so funny when we were playing the other day for you as a defender yeah because you're not a true defender right but you're just so strong with the ball so like i knew the amount of like one hand digs that were going to be <laughs> not ideal but just, <laughs> just uh, in the air and good you know <laughs> like it's just like it just made it so much easier you know because yeah. you're like okay this person does this thing very well yeah you know like try and trevor for example last year like the longer the play went the harder it was for you to score a point right so you had to get it down right away similarly or i guess the inverse with try and, and or with uh with came and theo was yeah. you wanted to get the ball in the air as much as possible <laughs> because like right. the longer that rally went like they it's not that they were disinterested they just like they just kind of like were looking for the right away kill yeah. you know they weren't long rally guys great they, side out team yeah not, long rally guys. not interested not interested in playing the ball over the net three or four times yeah possible they could do it but they just weren't he didn't seem yeah, as interested in strength yeah that's, versus that's, like that's a tim and kyle strength exactly yeah exactly um and that's actually something like hagan i used to always say too like just keep the ball in the air like we will outlast we'll outlast them yeah um and so it's it's always fun like so i love to watch uh, obviously my video but then i'm watching uh you know sean cook and i playing against you and jm yeah and just kind of not breaking JM down, but you know, as another left sider, like what is JM doing that maybe I can start to incorporate, yeah, or I can take into my game and say, uh, and say, like, okay, this is another wrinkle, yeah, um, you know, and, and JM has that full swing kind of swiping, like slime ball. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. And you hear it, it's weird as a defender, you hear it and you see it, and you're like, it's just like this, like. Yeah, I was like, that can't be. That it's, can't be. and it's like three feet in bounds. And Tim Brewster, it, it's still you can see it just blow his mind when oh, he does yeah. it. Tim's like, that doesn't make sense. It li <laughs> like it, it literally is a duck fart. Like <laughs> li literally baseball. <laughs> like yeah. literally is just it hits the bat weird. It's just mm -hmm. a duck fart. Um, Timmy, uh, Timmy Baumgren was doing that to Tim Brewster and Kyle, and in, in uh, because he had hurt his back, and he just like would get there right as he was about to go, he just kind of. Yeah, <laughs> like Tim was like, "What are you doing?" The deep spatch is indefensible. Oh, such a such a hard ball. <laughs> came is came is amazing at it. Yes, Theo is also very good at it. Um, Christian Sorum is probably the best in the world at it. You watch I, Christian Sorum play? I do. He will not get top spin on almost any of his swings. It's like he, he kind of catches people high, and he pushes balls. Like he yeah. he will go to swing. I mean, he can't hit obviously, but he'll go up and swing, kind of push the ball. Um, actually, I've been watching a lot of Sorum to try to figure out the. Um, Samoylovs did it to me when they were in town. Yeah. It's it's the little baby line shot yeah. that is trying to play the blocker. So if yeah. the blocker jumps, it kind of gets to the sideline fast. Mm -hmm. um, and Christian Storm does a really good job of that. As soon as he kind of assesses the play, he'll right over the top. Um, first time I tried to go do it, went out to the beach. I'm like, hey. I mean, I probably hit that thing like six feet in the air. <laughs> Trevor like walked over to it and was like, what are you doing? Yeah. I was like, I don't even know. I don't. <laughs> I miss hit it. Yeah. You know, like I just, it, you, it's really a different hand contact. Um, and the way that like the way that certain players contact the ball versus other players is just, it's really, it's really fun to watch that. It's really fun to yeah. learn. Like, the way that Casey Patterson does things versus the way that like Try does things versus the way that Trevor does things. Like you kind of look at those guys and say, what are some of the things that I can incorporate and and just take my game to the next step? Yeah. Um, obviously, of course, people are watching. You know, Novak. Uh, oh, Tsar. Yeah. Um, from Estonia, the Swedes. I mean, you can't not. Um, but I even like watching. Um, this this is for this is kicking it old school a little bit, but I love watching Herrera Guevara. Yeah, because those guys have been doing it for so long. Like, yeah. what are they doing? 
Like, what are they doing? Where's their progression? Yeah. And they don't really have a ton of progression. They just do the things that they do very, very same well. Same thing as uh, Brower Musen. Ex- yeah, exactly. Put in the same way since 2010. Yeah. I, I, I started to watch, uh, I started to watch some, uh, some guy had, had clipped um, only um, Brower hitting mm-hmm. from the uh, scouting camp. And so I was watching that and uh, I watched like four side outs and then turned it back to Christian Sorum because I was like, I don't have that shoulder. Yeah. Brower's shoulder is. Oh, it's perfect. His arm swing is, it's, it's like borderline violent. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, like there are just, there are a couple guys. Like Sean Cook is one of those guys. Like he hits yeah. a couple balls and you're just like. Phew. It's weird because he comes in and he doesn't even have, like a, he doesn't draw back all that big and she's just like. Cuckoo. But then he comes How? down and he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. he goes he goes yeah the longer the season goes the better my shoulder is it's like i don't think anatomy anatomy wise that's how it works yeah. but i love that i love that but yeah he just absolutely thunders the ball yeah which is just incredible to see and the, his ability to create all that energy out of seemingly nothing Oh, yeah. Him and Wyatt are, I think, yeah. are the only two guys I've seen where it's just like, and eh, it's lazy, it's lazy, and then just boom. Yeah. Like, how'd you do that? Like, I feel like I need to dangle it pretty far and like have a good full rotation to do that. It's it's crazy to watch. Like, Lottie's the same way, where it's just this yep. nice, lazy, and then whop. I, uh, yeah, my arm's too long for that. Yeah, I, I think I'm with, how long is your wingspan? Have you measured that? I, I don't know. So I'm 6'5", but yeah, the arm, the I mean, wingspan is, I mean, wide. but you look at like, you look at a guy like Logan too. Yeah. Logan's arms are just like, you think you're getting a line shot down and then oh my you just kind of. I don't know the last time I've had a clean line <laughs> shot around <laughs> Logan. It has, I mean, I'm hitting a jumbo line. But he's still touching. I'm like, jeez. I just remember in Central Florida, we had, um, <clears throat> we had Jay, uh, Jay helping us is a friend of Lisa's um, who plays who played in Huntington for a while. She's actually coaching in Stenson. Oh, Jay uh, Fisher. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay, I'm sorry. I forgot your last name. So I just know you as Jay. Sorry. So. From, you got two volleyball nerds in here. If we have one name, one of us is going to get uh, Yeah, name. yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I, I'm, I'm a big face guy. So I like okay. can remember people's faces, but yeah. like last names, like, uh, you know, probably I'll be like, oh, I know you. I don't have any clue what your name is. Um, but she was coaching us and... Um, I hit a line shot. Logan touches it. And and Sean, like, Sean doesn't even walk over. He just kind of, like, casually saunters over yeah. and, like, plays it up. And I was just like, it's just the worst feeling as a hitter when you, like, hit what you think is a good high ball yeah. and it's just touched and then the defender just kind of saunters over. And I just remember going back to the, the sideline of Jay and going, like, the line is open. The line's wide open. Yeah. And I, like, I remember thinking in my head, like, I'm trying. <laughs> like, I'm doing yeah. my best. Like I'm trying to get there. You yeah. know, like guys like David Lee. I don't think I hit. We played them in Chicago. Him and Reed. Uh, I'm pretty sure I tried to pelt it at Reed as hard as I could. Yeah. Just because I was like, if I try to shoot over David, like it's not happening, and like I'm just gonna challenge Reed to be a good defender. Yeah. Um, not that he's not a good defender. It's just that was percentage wise. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on the field of battle. And that's the percentage that I, I yeah. would like in this particular instance yeah. um, versus like Timmy and Kyle. I don't think I struck a ball at Timmy one time. Yeah. And if I did, it was a mistake. I mean, you can't. Yeah. You just anything he touches, anything in his vicinity, he's going to touch. And not as he just going to touch it, but it's going to be right into Kyle's mitt. Oh, I mean, yeah. Which Kyle's a fanta- fantastic setter. Yeah. <clears throat> the amount of times, though, when we were training against you guys that I – did something, a block, a pull, or whatever, and the ball kind of came near me, and I was like, yeah, all right, I didn't, I'm not on that play. Yeah. And Timmy's just on it, Ooh. and I was just like, what, what, what's happening? The ball's in the air? Like, what are we doing? We're playing still? Like, oh, okay, cool, you know? Like, trying to flail around, like, just put a, put the ball in the, in the, in the, the hitting window. Yeah. Um, but he's just, he's, I mean, he's taken his speed and turned, like, the reading into like, the next level. Yeah. And like those guys, like it's just so fun to watch. Um, like I watched the Chicago game against them, and man, like wow, they are really freaking good. Yeah, they They're are just really good. good volleyball players. Yeah, it was fun too because uh, so we had this one play where Kyle pulled, and he got stuck wide. So I, I think I tried to do that, like, wrap, yeah. you know, to the line. Um, I tried to take a little off of it so it kind of moved him, yeah. you know. 
And he kind of like one hand scoopied it and like took his steps, but he moved the line. So he kicked the line out. And Tim, we argued about this, but I watched the video again. <laughs> Kyle kicked it out. I didn't move it. <laughs> and uh, Kyle kicks the line out, um, taking his approach to like kind of get in there. And um, the play ends and the ball actually lands on the line that's bowed out. And the line judge comes down and calls it out of bounds. Yeah. And Timmy goes, Timmy looks me dead in the eyes and goes, you moved the line. That ball is in. And I was like, I have never seen Timmy this fired up. Yeah. But I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I was like, Tim I, would, I, I'm, Tim, I would do something like that. But I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. The, the, up ref come, or the, the up ref comes down um, and they kind of confer with the line judge. And he calls it our ball. And he goes, it's where the line starts right. at the beginning of the play. And then he goes, he goes, this and last week has been the first time in 12 years <laughs> that I've had to call that particular play. That's funny. I was like, wow. But it, it kind of makes sense because very, I mean, those, those lines are like, they snap, they snap down. Yeah. Um, and that's actually how the line judge, I was talking to the line judge after. I was like, how, you know, what's, what's the call on that? Obviously mid game. I'm not going to ask for an explanation. Um, but he was like, yeah, like I, like I snapped the line down before the play actually started. So I had sort of a, you know, you had a good barometer. For exactly. Yeah. And then what pulled the line up, snapped it back on where the ball mark was, it had landed on the line, but because we had snapped it into place, right. You know, but it was cool to see, cause there's that sort of the transition of fire, I guess, for lack of a better phrasing, because, yeah. you know, especially in the sports world, a lot of people will talk about like that inner fire, the yeah. inner beast, whatever you want to say. Um, and Timmy's been lifting. The guy is like shredded. Yeah, now. he's ripped up. He is huge. Um, and so it's it's really fun to see like that competitive setting, mm -hmm. you know, because during during the pandemic, like we were we were training down at 29th. Yeah. Pretty regularly, um, not having not done much. And then played in a played in a CBVA Open where we lost to Schwengel and Berkey. You know, to see us playing on Sunday right. in Chicago, yeah, was quite. Uh, I remember texting Lisa and just being like, "What That's a cool. surreal, you know, what a surreal experience." Um, and it's fun too because I was like walking by and like Timmy was like kind of off to the side stretching, and you could see he was very like unhappy with the yeah. result, um, which I think is it shows just how important a lot of the games are, you know, I feel like sometimes the fans will watch and will be like, oh, they look like they don't care. Yeah. <clears throat> you look like you wouldn't care 98 degree weather at 70% humidity. Right. I'm tired. It's conserving. Yeah, I'm conserving. tired, you know, <laughs> like I care a lot, you know, but it's, 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 it is fun because a lot of it, a lot of the guys know each other. A lot of, a lot of us are friends yeah. and, but we still want to win not to beat our friend per se, but I'm sure there is some of that where someone's like, I want to beat that guy. But for the most part, it's like, I want to play at the highest level that I can. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fun. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. Winning I'm, is fun. Playing, like having a really high level match is yeah. just really fun. Like oh, yeah. Delaney, she played Molly Turner and Carly Scott in the finals of Seaside and Laguna. And I think both were 21-19, 21-19 in both <laughs> matches. And Delaney was like, I couldn't even be mad because it was just, it's so fun yeah. playing that high level. Yeah. It's stressful. It yeah. is stressful. I can only imagine watching. Oh, watching is way worse than playing. Oh, yeah. It's playing, you can control it. Watching, I'm just like, I didn't do anything. Yeah. We, <laughs> I can't even speak. In Central Florida, uh, Lisa didn't watch. We played Sean. So we played Sean and, and Logan. And uh, we're, we're, so Sean came over from playing internationally uh, yeah. when I was in Ventura and he, his, uh, so Courtney, his wife now, but girlfriend at the time, uh, played with Lisa a little bit and was like, Hey, my boyfriend's coming over, you know, would you, would your husband be willing to train or play? And I was like, you know, she told her like, he hasn't been playing, like he's pretty bad and he's, <laughs> and he's fat. <laughs> Dude, we have one from like Easter when Quest was like one and I was like fat, fat, fat. <laughs> she was just like, bro, you were big. I was like, don't even get me started. And um, and so so we started playing. So we played kind of on and off for three years because he was doing international uh, yeah. indoor stuff. So we've been playing, obviously. We've known each other and played with each other for a long time. And so Courtney and then Lisa 
are having to watch now as we're both playing yeah. like main draw stuff. Um, and uh, so we were going to have to play them in Miami if Hagen and Billy weren't able to make it. Okay. And Sean started a group chat and was like, really, this is how the season's going to start out? <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa was just like, you're already stressing me out. Like, yeah. stop. Um, but we played in Central Florida and she's like, yeah, I'm glad I couldn't watch because I did stream court two. Yeah. Um, which shout out for Bally's for streaming court two this year. Yeah. Um, they didn't for Miami, but hopefully moving forward, it'll be, it'll be good for all of us volley nerds that <laughs> um, want to continue to watch um, even after the tournament. But yeah, it's it's just interesting how all of it's such a small world that all of the players yeah. kind of like their stories, their journeys are all kind of commingled. Yeah, um, which I think is great. Um, and yours is a cool one because I've seen you go through like th- four iterations of a volleyball player. Like when I got here, I mean, you were freaking like one of the best players in the area. I watched you hit a ball. I was like, damn, like that. <laughs> guys freaking good you're getting after it brunsting yeah and then i think when you got married and had quest like yeah. all the huntington guys were just like r.i.p yeah Jake Dietrich's volleyball career yeah yeah and then you were sort of like cbva guy you'd pop out yep and then you just like last year you just freaking exploded yeah it was funny in hermosa um i walked in the player tent which is the first time i had ever been in the player tent yeah it's your first main draw right yeah hermosa amazing Chase, <laughs> Chase goes, Chase Freshman goes, uh, is this number three for you? I was like, no, this is number one, dude. We had just beaten Try and, and Trevor. He's like, no way. What a way to start. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I blacked out what happened, yeah. you know? And then we played Jeremy and, and Billy. And I don't know, it's sort of like a euphoria takes over you. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people will play, like replay the, the Hagen balance at the end of, of game three. Right. And I just remember setting that ball and going like, I don't know what's about to happen, but it's going to be a kill. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a kill. You know, I don't, I don't even remember on the video, but I can, ar- I already remember like yelling before the ball is even struck, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a, such a fun experience. You know, really the big thing was sort of that COVID lockdown. Um, you know, I joke because I bring down a lot of stuff now. I mean, two ball bags, a ball cart, yeah. like antennas. I have, there's a, pair of lines i have to give sean back his pair of lines um (laughs) you know but straps like so but during the pandemic i would train a lot with like chase buttinger timmy um aaron rice when he was playing a bunch um some of these guys who couldn't really get out you couldn't really get out much and it wasn't like a lot of guys were playing at the time um but we had i had a net so we'd go down the 29th i had a net i had lines i had antennas i had balls and we'd set everything up before work, before I had to go to to work from home, set everything up, take it all down, go work. Yeah. Uh, but but getting to work with like Chase for uh, that period of time, and Duncan, Duncan Bunninger obviously was uh, a big part of it as well. Um, this was pre shoulder surgery for him, but gosh, like those guys are just so smart. Yeah. So it was really fun. So like it was nice um, to kind of pick their brains just on how to just be better. Mm-hmm. Um. So you kind of play a bunch of CBVAs. You're a good volleyball player. You can play the game well. Um, but there's does it's this is next step that you need in the process. Yeah. Whatever it is, like you find that elite thing and then you just you go to it. Yeah. It's a mental fire. It's a I don't know. So I always thought I was like a good passer. And then how do you translate it in that into a kill? Right. You know, and finding ways to like, okay. I'm going to pass well. I'm going to stay behind the ball. I'm going to look off of the defender, yeah. you know, and you kind of learn that vision over a period of time. Um, but Chase was, Chase is, Chase has so such good vision. I mean, he's so athletic. He jumps and just holds and then, you know. He's, he's incredible. <laughs> I mean, just, he's so freaking good, man. Um, as a blocker, it's the worst too. You like jump and you're like, ah, you're not hitting it at me ever. Like, yeah. Okay. I think me and Avery practiced against Chase and Miles, and it was our first practice. And we did fine. We did well. It was like we lost 20-19, 15-13 in two sets, like competed in drills. But every time I go to block Chase, I'm like, I feel so mismatched. Oh, And it's not because yeah. most people, a lot of bigger guys will bring it low at some point, yep. And I just yep. wait and wait, and I'll get them twice in a set. Yep. And that's all you need. But Chase never gives me anything. <laughs> like, you, when you block Chase – 
like take the ball like you freaking oh yeah that thing. yeah i yeah. can't and he, man he's a good blocker I've been, i i uh, i uh i've been i've been trying to visualize that a little bit more the the taking the ball uh try did that to try did that in um where was the where was the elite um and tepic tepic thank you um in the qualifier so he's so there's a mic like right next to the up ref. Yeah. He blocks the ball and goes, "Give me that." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he tried to do that to me. So he so we're down we're down. Uh, we switch. Maybe we switched eleven fourteen, but we were we were up fourteen ten. Yeah. In on them in the third. So I was like, sick. All I gotta do is like hit one ball. I watched the video. I watched the video again over the summer, and I was like, I did like. I they made two like oh, really good plays. plays. Yeah. And I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. Try hits a tape cut kill. I was like, you scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? <laughs> like, wow. Like, okay. Um, but I just remember uh I just remember getting like they just honed in on me. I yeah. gave him four straight points for 14-14 and then managed to side out on a wonky back ball that like they just happened to like not be ready for. Um, and then obviously Hagen came in and just a little sea mace. <sighs> Disgusting. Which I don't know how many times I've seen a team be leading, say 1411 at that switch, yeah. lose it yeah. and then win. That, to yeah. stop that momentum and then to like get that thing in reverse, all the gears are like. <laughs> it was so interesting. Like that was, I would say, the turning point for me from a mentality standpoint because there's this mental struggle that everyone kind of goes through. Like, yeah. oh, it's not – I'm just never going to get there. Yeah. Or I'm just or like, okay, like cool. We I, I gave it my best shot. It's not my destiny. Yeah. You know, everyone kind of, especially with sports, they always kind of look at it from like, it's my destiny or right. my whatever. Like, and like, there is sort of this like caving in feeling when you yeah. give up four straight points and you're the guy getting served, you know? Like, and you can, you can feel your partner going like this. Come on. I'm <laughs> just like, I'm like, I'm trying. But what happened was, they we switched so that gave up one point or i think they sided out yeah they sided out for 11 i think we, we went back we were up 10 4 i went back to serve i think and i think i tried to rip an ace I tried to rip a jumper i think seemed too <laughs> um i think i missed it and then we switched sides and yeah. they served me and the ball so we had a noon match if i remember correctly and I think by the time we got to the third set, it was like one, um, about one-ish. But the sun had moved yeah. right on top of <laughs> yeah. me. So as I had <laughs> passed and kind of scoot out, the ball was rolling right into the sun. So I couldn't actually see the ball. Yeah. So I run a normal ball and that's 2-4. That's and I was like, okay. I'm going to try to switch it up. So I actually stack on top of Hagen. Yeah. And try to do the same thing. And I kind of like slice it down. They make a great play. Three, four. Yeah. I was like, the, you know, the kind of the walls are closing in on you a little bit. And you're just like, you know, <laughs> mentally you're small. like, I don't even know that we had a timeout. I think I, I think I might've asked about it and it was like, no, no, no. Like we're not taking it. Yeah. And then same thing. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll stack again. And if I think if I think the the line shot's available, I'll hit it high over the top. We'll be fine. Um, and I remember stacking in. Try stays ball on me, and I was like, "That means a line run. Yeah. That's scary." Yeah. And I remember trying to hit it into the angle. I'm pretty sure I hit it in the angle again. And uh, Trevor, Trevor, like ups me. They make the play. Yeah. One of the, actually one of them was a block. One of them was a block. I remember that because that was the one that try like I blocked it and try like give me that, give me that. Yeah. and I like kicked it away from really quick. I was like <laughs> no, you know, because it was like that mental battle of like oh no, tries locking in. I was like no no no, get away from him. get away from him. yeah. And uh, so so we're at fourteen fourteen, and I was like I need to do. I can't see the ball. I cannot see the ball, and these guys are too good to give me a freebie. Yeah, and so I ran the back set. So actually, Theo and Kame at the beginning of the season had been running what they were calling a flare. So it's like a faster back ball. Um, and it kind of floats into the spot. And I was like, run it. 
I just told Hagen, I was like, the pass will be there. Guarantee it. The pass will be there. Run the play and I will, I will find a kill. And we run the play and try stays in the angle and Trevor's late to the line run. And I like just, I don't even know if I hit it. I think I poked it. I did something. I just kind of hit it flat, like right away. Like, oh shoot, yeah. it's open and hit it into the line. And then just remember standing at the net going like, I hope he gets an ace right here. Because <laughs> if I have to go back into serve receive, yeah. I'm not sure I'm getting another point. You know what I mean? Like, you're just like, you, you know, I don't know I've ever, like, I don't know that I've ever admitted that part of it. But yeah. like, I literally was like, I hope I don't have to go into serve receive again. Because that is, because it was Trevor, Trevor float serving. Like, Trevor float serving is good, but like, it, he does allow you to kind of find a rhythm. Yeah. I was like, if Tri goes back there and hits a jumper, I'm probably cooked. I'm probably not. I'm probably not going to make it out of here. Yeah. Um, and then the like the energy from the crowd, like it was crazy because we played Dio and came for Chicago and and uh, the crowd, there was no crowd. Yeah. So it's like we're like 16 seed feeding off of ourselves. Right. Against Dio and came who. The machines. Are yeah they like don't show emotion like ever <laughs> you know. Yeah. We uh so we're in the middle, we're in the middle or in game two. We had just lost to we had just lost to Try and Trevor. We just lost the game one. We're playing in game two. And um, I think we lost 21-19 or something like that. In game two, Trevor and Try start talking smack to me. Yeah. And I remember not I remember like not responding or doing anything. Um, partially because I, I I think I can't like hear out of like my left ear. So like I would like turn to like Hagen yeah. and like couldn't I like couldn't hear them partially. Um, but, uh, but Hagen's like, don't, don't say anything. Don't say anything. I was like, I can't even hear them. Like, we're, we're good. We're good. Um, but I just remember saying to him, I was like, if they're talking trash, they think they're in trouble. Like the only reason you talk smack is because you don't think you're going to win like easy. I was like, okay. And like, it kind of gives you that level of confidence when you're in server Steve. Like, oh, yeah. like, oh, maybe, maybe they think they're, you know, maybe they think they're in trouble a little bit. Now, now I know that Trevor and try just or feed off that energy yeah, so they don't think the way, yeah it's just the way that try stays mentally engaged yeah which i, mean, I love yeah and, which and I, love I love it. it man i love playing people mm-hmm. who talk shit and you understand that it's part of the game mm-hmm. my favorite matches yep. in the whole world are playing against evan Corey because me and evan are such good friends <laughs> yeah, and that. we are it's back and forth yeah the whole time yeah the whole yep. time yeah and then right after like i'll go barbecue with him and savvy like once yeah. every two weeks <laughs> And, it's, and we'll get coffee, like, randomly. So people are like, damn, like, are you and Evan got a little rivalry? I'm like, no. Like, I freaking yeah, love yeah, that yeah, kid. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. This is going to date me a little bit, but, like, N64 Smash Bros with your with your buddies. Oh, yeah. And you're, like, you're like talking smack because you, like, want them to lose, but you're, like, you're just, like, shooting it with your, your boys. Right. You're, like, you know, it's all good. Uh, actually, Ian Satterfield the other day in training was, like, I don't talk smack because I, I'm, I want to, like, harm you mentally. Yeah. He's like, I'm just, you know, it's like playing Super Smash with my bros. It's just fun. Yeah. It's you're a just fun out, element. Yeah, yeah. You're just out here. We're out on the beach. Like, we're not taking ourselves too seriously. I mean, right. we are taking ourselves seriously, like trying to like get better at our craft. Um, but yeah, it's not like, it's not like I'm going to like say something to you about like a silly play that you made and like. We're not trying to cut deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> and I get it. Some people, some people may take things more offensively than others but for the most part i think you kind of know like you and evan know yeah um because i remember i remember we played uh evan and and dave in in chicago again and, and dave actually was cramping he had like he had like the quad the hamstring i'm pretty sure his glute was cramping the oh. calf cramp the whole thing his just whole leg was like locked up brutal and uh i'm sitting back there talking to i think it was like savvy i think it was like evan's brother or his like family or whatever and yeah. then savvy was back there and uh the they had their medical and uh the ref is ushering them back on the court and you could clearly see like dave was like and i just remember like talking to savvy and just being like he can have my time out do they want our do they yeah. want our medical <laughs> <laughs> savvy was like no 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 don't be ridiculous you know <laughs> and i was like i mean no seriously like if he needs it like because i want that competition to be good, good. Yeah. yeah it's good it's fun competition you yeah. know a guy cramping like I think he was wearing like tights and long sleeves. So like, Always. I've I mean, never seen Dave not wear that. It's crazy. In Dave game one, two, in game one, two, uh, we uh, Hagen and I, you know, we're not naming names here. 
Hagen and I managed to come upon two alcoholic beverages. Um, I think they were a couple of big waves. They were phenomenal, like tall boys. Nice. Um, we were getting crushed, crushed in game one. And uh, we were like, do we need some beers? Hey, he was like, I'll send a text. A couple of beers. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it was at a timeout. Oh, I love it. That's like old school NBA stuff oh, right dude. there. D- sends a DM. Sends a DM. Two beers. Managed to find our way to the player box. Amazing. Oh, it was fantastic. So we're we're in. I'm pretty sure we're in the switch or like a timeout or between games, like just chugging beer. We're like, might as well. I mean, yeah. we made it to get. We made it to game three of Saturday. Like you know, whatever. I still hold. That probably helped us win the game, win the match. Dude, it's like honestly, it'll help. It does. You're burning it so fast yeah. that you're not yeah. going to get drunk, and it actually does help you with cramping. Mm-hmm. It reminds me. Did you watch the Netflix series on the PGA Tour Full Swing? Theo's been telling me that I should watch it. I haven't seen it yet. So this guy Joel Dahman, okay, he's just this journeyman PGA player. He's ranked like number seventy two in the world. And his <laughs> mindset, he's so funny, man. He goes, I mean, somebody has to be the, the seventy two ranked golfer in the world. It might as well be me. But so he had missed out. I think you have to be ranked top 65 or so to get a straight berth into the U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah, So then yeah, you have yeah. to go through sectional yeah. qualifying, which is just – it's it's like an AVP qualifying. It's you brutal. You sign up and you go. And it's one day. It's 36 yeah. holes. And he – I think he was a couple over after the first it, first round. And so he's like, I got to shoot seven under on the second round. <sighs> so he was crushing white claws in between rounds. <laughs> goes out, shoots 63, qualifies, takes I think an eighth of the U.S. Open. Was leading going into Sunday. That is hilarious. Amazing. That is amazing. My, so my dad actually worked in the golf industry for 12 years. And okay. so he worked for a company called Harrison Shafts, which made uh, graphite shafts, which were actually used for the long drive competition. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever watched a long drive competition. They're animals. Dude. <laughs> they are. They look like bodybuilders. Yeah. And they are just machines. And, and the, the clubs are huge. Oh, yeah. And the bend on those. Yeah. That's why they need graphite. So anyways, he, he uh, so we would always watch Sunday or we'd always watch, um, always watch Tiger on Sunday, obviously, but we'd always watch golf and golf is usually on Yeah, at my parents' house and um, just such respect for the mental fortitude for yep. those guys. Like that's you, that and tennis. I mean, at least for volleyball, you have a guy on your side, but yeah. you have your guy who's there to help. Um, but when you're on your own. And sometimes yeah. when you're getting served, yeah. you kind of feel like you're on an island. You yeah. Know? I was talking to Zana about this because her mom played professional golf. And, oh, okay. And golf was my best sport growing up. That okay. was what I was best at in high school. And um, and I think that golf is the greatest teacher of mental toughness in yeah. sport. Of anything I've ever done, at like classes, yeah. whatever, sports, I think golf. Because when you're out there and you're playing bad – it doesn't expedite your death. No. When you're playing bad in volleyball, like yeah. you're gonna get 21, 10, 20, 10. You're out of yep. there in 25 minutes, yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. Golf, you're playing shitty. You gotta grind, man. Yeah. You're, it's gonna be five hours of just awfulness. Yeah. That's and you just you you have to figure it out. You have yeah. no other choice. My my so we'd go play. I'm not I, I I do enjoy golf. My brother and I used to take three clubs, a pocket full of golf balls, and go play the nine hole by yeah. our by our, our house. I love that. Nine holes, perfect. Yep. Par threes, great. We go out with my dad, uh, 18 holes, and I would just lose interest. Yeah. Like, you know, very much like Quest. I would like <laughs> go on to the, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Dad, I can we, you know? Yeah. And um, he, the amount of times that that boy hurts himself running around the house is hard to quantify. Yeah. It is just jumping, hasn't even seen what's underneath him, just jumping. And I'm like watching the whole thing, like, oh. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, what, I mean, what did you expect, you know? Yeah. And um, so he'll take us out to go 18 and they would always, you know, my dad and my brother were a little bit closer. They did a lot of baseball stuff together. I wasn't a big baseball guy. Their game lasts so long. Yeah. The, all the changes the MLB made, Just though, are, up now. are it's kinda nice. I love it, dude. Yeah. Watching Max Scherzer get out there and like calling his pitch to the catcher before like the, like the, Ball hasn't even come back to him. He's like, pull calling, and then like, you know, he's rushing the batters, you know, yeah. as opposed to the batters rushing the pitchers. Amazing. But they would always get up to the tee, and they'd always say, smooth is long. And so, oh, you like know, that. the idea being the smoother, the smoother, you, the smoother you take your swing, 
the longer the ball will go because the harder you try to hit it, um, obviously the worse off you're going to be, you know, cause my dad would always joke about playing army golf yeah. left, right, left, right. You know? So, he, you know, we, I'd, I'd make my way down the course, but it was always, yeah. you know, I'm over here, I'm over there, I'm over here, you know? Um, you know, and, and, and I, I, I really like that too, because I think it applies very much to volleyball as well. I've always thought about volleyball, like in a, in terms of like a ballet, mm-hmm. like if you really watch some of the greatest players play, it's so smooth. Yep. Um, I watched, I, I watched some of the old school. I watched the nineties, um, Hawaii, Honolulu. Nice. Uh, yeah. I think it was Steffes and Karai against Stokey and, um, Sinjin. Okay. And all of those guys setting the passing, the hitting, they're so smooth. And like, really when you watch, when you watch like one of those really fun plays, it's so graceful. And like you watch someone like really hitting the ball and then like the defender, like really, like really cushioning and scooping it. And like just the way the ball kind of like flows through the game is just amazing to me. So I've always looked at like my arm swing as like, I want to make it as smooth as possible. Yeah. I want to make jumping as smooth as possible. I want to pass like Chase Frischman does it. His passing his is. His platform. If I'm like building a volleyball player and taking yeah. skill, but I'm taking Chase Frischman's platform. Him or Ty Trambley. It's kind of a tie. Oh, Ty. I love me some Ty. <laughs> oh, man. His energy, dude. I see him down at the beach sometimes. I'm like, Ty. His energy is amazing all the time. And you're yeah. right. His platform was truly like like very smooth, very um, intentional. Yeah. And I mean, Chase, like I watched, I watched a video of Chase and he like is, you know, kind of hip popped, kind of casually standing. Someone rips a jumper at him. He's kind of like throws his arms out and he's like, pink, perfect pass. I was like, oh, can I, how do I bottle that energy up? Yeah. Just, and then just kind of, you know, like how do I, and then I just sprinkle kind of some over my head at before yeah. a game just to like, I want, that's the energy I yeah. want when I'm passing, you know? Cause you just want to be smooth. You want to be, you want to be long and you want to be intentional. Yeah. I mean, that's passing 95% mental, just trying to put the angle, just trying to put the correct angle on it. You know, I feel like the harder you try to pass, the worse passer you are. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, it's just like, you know, you want to try to be, you want to very much try to be intentional about what you're doing, but you're still trying to be nonchalant, you know? Um, and so I just try to always look for that smooth as long. Yeah. You know, I think, I think you have the smooth. Watch the swing. I'm like, whoo, that's nice. It is super smooth. It, it 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 opens up so much of the court, and I think it really does make it so easy to like show heavy angle swing. Yeah, and then chop. You know, Sean always like every time we play against each other, he's like the f- shoulder. Yeah, he's like that. You're so wristy. Yeah, your like, shoulder to wrist combo is very good. I have worked a long time at like really like I yeah a long time at trying to and like a lot of that too came from uh, my high school coach um, Zach Ambrose uh, was really intentional about like arm swing and so he had he, he I would just started with a tennis ball yeah so he would have me elbow high and just like getting the hand behind and like you know throwing the tennis ball just into the ground yeah but he was so good about just you know and that's I think I talked to Lisa about development you know, and she was saying in, in South Carolina, because she was one of the high, she was one of the most sought after um, high school players in South in South Carolina. No kidding. Yeah, she had an offer to Hawaii, um, Pepperdine. Um, she had a couple other, she had a couple, she couple went to te- Clemson, right? Yeah, she went to Clemson, okay. uh, Texas as well, before Texas was like pretty good. Um, her, her dad convinced her to stay at Clemson, uh, bought her a car. Well, that's good so. incentive. Yeah. Clemson's a beautiful school too. Amazing. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, he actually has a home out on Lake Hartwell, oh, uh, which is the lake that neighbors it. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing. Like the football games, you can like, you know, take the boat or the pontoon boat. Oh, um, sick. So oh, southern. Oh, it's a, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Southern. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should take the pontoon to the football game. But even better too. He lives in a, it's called Townville. Oh, <laughs> amazing. I oh, yeah. South. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it is Tell glorious. Me. First time we visited, I just remember driving in from Atlanta because they don't have an airport. They have like Greenville is about a half hour, yeah. forty five minutes, about northeast. Uh, but 
Atlanta is the easiest one to get into. It's but not it's like Greenville is a booming metropolis. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And like Lisa's not a big fan of flying, so okay, taking a puddle jumper from Atlanta to uh, yeah, Greenville is not. Just like not, the on the yeah, <laughs> not on the menu, yeah. Not on the not on the menu. I don't really care. I don't really mind flying, yeah. but for her, it's not on the menu. But um, so we'll fly to Atlanta. I just remember dri- the drive from Atlanta to Townville, and it's just green. Yeah, and I was like, whoa. And then we get into we get into Townville, and there's not a market within a half hour of the town or of of her dad's house, um, right on the lake. So pristine. Yeah. It's just amazing. Um, and there's land out there. Oh, dude, yeah. That's the thing. When I, whenever yeah. I go home, because I have a really rural town in Maryland that I grew okay. up in, so whenever yeah. I go home, I'm just like, man, yeah. there's cows and there's horses and farms <laughs> and fields, and I come back to California, I'm like, where'd the green go? Yeah. <laughs> you got this turf grass. <laughs> That's it. Is that a tree? Is there, do we have, we have a tree? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lisa always uh, the when she first got here. Um, I think she got here 2014 or something like that. Uh, she was there's a clip going around, and it's newscasters in California, and they're looking at a camera that's you know looking at the sky. They're talking about like rain or some whatever, and one of the newscasters is like, "Is that a cloud? Is that a, is that a cloud?" <laughs> <laughs> we just don't you know we just, yeah. It was, you know, we've had a lot of rain and wind and, and, and it's been cloudy a lot recently. Yeah. But come summertime, like. It's like a Corona commercial. Oh, it's, yes. Ridiculous. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg actually literally just hanging out on the beach. Yeah. I think he still lives in Long Beach too. Really? I think so. But, um, yeah, it literally is a Corona commercial. It's hilarious, but it's really nice. It's really nice to go back and kind of experience some of those things yeah. in, in Townville. I keep trying to convince her that, uh, we should go play the clash or the crown something. It's like a grass Both tournament out there. Yeah. yeah. It's like a grass tournament in Columbia. She's like, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Grass is out, man. Like, yeah. Can't do Pottstown it. just killed so many players in one <sighs> fell swoop. Like yeah. Joyner tweaked his Achilles, Katie Spieler tore ACL, yep. Lindsay Sparks is like the full, uh, every yeah. CL you got. Yeah. There's a couple of them. I think Hartong didn't get hurt, but it's like, damn, I'm out. No more grass for me. I played with Paco once, and I I've had heard so much that. fun. And then it took me a month to get back. I've, I've heard, heard the my quads were cement blocks. I've heard the sand oh. out there is not ideal. No, it's man, it's such a cool tournament. Yeah, but it's it's pretty rough. If it it I've played there three times, and it's rain like flooded oh, out. So you're playing yeah. standing water for two of them. I was yeah. like, this is. Just a bad recipe. I played with A-Rob for one. He's like, if they're standing water and we're playing, we're not playing. He's like, we're forfeiting. Because yeah. A-Rob, I mean, is 46, 47. Yeah. yeah. And so a bad fall, like, yeah. if he tears something in his yeah. shoulder, like, yeah, that's it. He's, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the same thing. I mean, I remember, that was a long, long time ago, but Chicago had not great conditions. And then they had, like, the portable nets that they had put up for the qualifier. Yeah. New Orleans, like we were talking about the other day, was like 11, 11, 7, just yes. like blistering wind, <laughs> yeah. like rained out court. Um, yeah, that was, and Coconut Beach is great. Like that yeah. was phenomenal. Um, it was so hot the time that I played against Tim and Brian that we, we'd we call the timeout. So it was like a respect thing that each team called the, their timeout throughout the game yeah. because it was so hot. And they had this big fan in the bar. And like, so we would all just go stand together, both <laughs> yeah. teams, just underneath the fan, not saying anything. Yeah. Because it was so hot. Yeah. You and know? humid. Oh, humid. just brutal. That was actually, it was funny. I was talking to Taylor Crabb about, that was his first AVP as well. And he lost in the, he lost in the pigtail game. Yeah. Uh, in the first round, he was the very first game of the know, entire tournament. Do you know who? This yes. Is, this, this will test your volleyball nerddom. Um, yeah, it was. I can see their names. Um, it was a. The, so he's a taller, kind of heavier set blonde guy. Yeah. Who has a really good. Bukema? Kevin Lynch. Kev, oh, that's who it was. Okay. Kevin Lynch. Kevin Lynch and Kevin Bukema had like the same build. Taller guys, kind of blonde, and like, yeah, it's Kevin Lynch, and he was playing with a younger, blonde-haired kid. I forget who Kevin was playing with, honestly, but I know that uh, Bug was playing with Spencer McLaughlin. Yes, yeah, so Taylor was playing with Spencer McLaughlin, and I, oh man, what was that guy's name? It was like Tanner, it wasn't Tanner Hughes, it was like, 
I feel like it was like Travis Hughes or something like that. It was Connor Hughes. I, it might have been. Yeah, there's Connor Hughes. It might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Kevin road. Lynch. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Okay, that I think that's the team. And uh, I just remember, I just remember them losing, and then the the beers over there were like for a, a whole like rack of domestic oh ones my gosh. was like four dollars like free. Yeah, it was yeah. like Coconut Beach. Excited to see you. Guys. Yeah. Oh, for real. No, I just remember Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor was drunk handing out like tequila shots like we had just lost and he's like y'all want a tequila shot and we we're like i mean yeah <laughs> sure we and it started raining so it started it rained out the qualifier game so they had to play the next morning yep. before the main draw so you could have been playing in the qualifier and then play your first match in the main draw uh wasn't us because timmy and timmy and uh brian put the wood to us um <laughs> We shared uh, we shared a Uber back to the hotel because they were uh, Spencer and, and Taylor were staying in the same hotel with us because Taylor was flying out to Detroit oh, to play nationals. Play nationals. Yes. The only reason I know that is because my girlfriend at the time, Lisa Dietrich, love you, was playing nationals. Okay. So she was at nationals in Detroit, and Taylor flew out right after they like that next morning. Okay. He was. He almost got in a fight with a guy with a truck, with a gun rack on the truck. Smart. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> all right, we're moving him along. He's like, you know, because the guy, I mean, the guy was like driving like in front of us. And yeah. like in California, like most of the time, like the 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 driver will stop, you know, let the guys pass. But he just kind of kept plugging and Taylor was like, you know, Taylor gave him, gave him a little one too. Um, like, Come on, man. You know, like, what'd you say? You know, Taylor, uh, Taylor was just like, Taylor was not having any of it. Yeah. Taylor was like, you heard me, you know, like, and Spencer's <laughs> like, duh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, let's move him along, you know, um, as this guy has like a gun rack with like four guns on it. I was yeah. just like, oh, mind you, in California, we don't have a gun rack. So yeah. that's the first time I had ever seen a gun <laughs> rack, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it was, it was so much like the, the Wayne's world. Yeah. Like, what do I need with a gun rack? I don't own a gun. Right. Um, and yeah, we just like kept pushing along and Taylor's like trying to fight this guy. It was hilarious, dude. Like I look back on that and I actually saw him in Miami and was like, you remember that? He's like, no. And he was, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. For obvious reasons. <laughs> for obvious reasons, he does not remember that. But it was just funny to see, funny to see like how the progression like through life and how like you, you start these tournaments and you play with certain guys and you see certain guys and how, you know, Taylor is now where he is. Yeah. Obviously one of the the best defenders um for the u.s um obviously miles is giving him a run for his money though yeah. miles is pretty oh dang good oh my gosh he's young jedi i mean i'm sure i'm sure timmy chase frischman hagan's probably trying to fight for that can that that uh that title as well yeah good luck anyone up against miles pertain <sighs> best of luck God's yeah speed. it's a I'm it's a, gonna be a grind i'm a believer I, oh yeah. I'm oh a yeah. Believer Miles Partain, man. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, you know, it's it's Theo Theo uh for all of his like he's very smart. Yeah. For all of his like quirks, he watches so much film. Oh my gosh. He I think he's one of the only people that I know you, Theo, and this lady I commentate with, Denise Austin, are the only ones where I'd be like, you know, ninety nine percent of the world I'd bet a lot of money on myself that I'd watch more film than them. But you three, like, they might have it. Theo watches everything. He watches a lot. And it is fun, too, because, um, so uh, I'll walk by their, I'll walk by their house and uh, sometimes the door will be open and I'll like, I'll see him watching film or like talk, start talking to him a little bit. Um, him and Joanna call it uh, getting jaked because I have a propensity to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? You know, my wife will be texting me like, where are you? You know, like I'm out front. Um, but, uh, but I'll, I'll like slip in questions like, Oh, who are you watching now? You yeah. Know? It's like, Oh, I've been watching Paris. Shoot. Like Paris, like his defense and then this, and you know, I've been watching Sorum and like how he plays defense and like whatever, like, Oh dude, I spent so much time watching miles per time. Like, Oh, what do they do? Like what, what makes them so good? You know? Yeah trying to get those little nuggets so yeah. just like you know as a blocker i can turn around and be like just do this and then this you know yeah. um but then blocking wise he's like yeah i'm trying to do more like borman where it looks straight up and down and it's just it's just so interesting because like he is an older 
player within like the world, but he's still kind of like trying to. He's like, I do these things very well. I'm going to do these things yeah. at an elite level. But he's still trying to find ways to like get better. Um, and that's just really fun to see as a blocker myself who like last year was the first year that I was like, I'm going to be a blocker. The year before that, I was like, I'm just a small blocker or like a big defender. Yeah. I'm actually like having fun as a blocker. Yeah. Whereas like before I was miserable. I'd like go up and like get tooled and be like, oh, I guess it's one of those games, you know? (laughs) Whereas like now I'll watch some film and like make a good move. Um, And even watching with Theo sometimes, Theo's broken down film with me, which is surreal because he's just like, he's the best blocker for the U.S., Arguably, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Tri will argue as well. I, I give it to Theo. I, sure. he, he's just so good. Yeah, he's just re- like really imposing, and he's just so analytical and such a fast. You know, they talk about quarterbacks being able to analyze the situation like very quickly. He just is able to process and like this is the block that I wanted for this play. It didn't work out, um, but yeah. So he'll be simultaneously like yelling at me for being terrible, um, and then. <laughs> telling me that it was a really good block. It was just an unlucky, you know, play. Cause that's hard too, as a, as a player to find which play was actually good and something that I should do on the very next play. Cause I will score a point. Yeah. I just happened to get unlucky. Um, I still have nightmares of central Florida. We played you and JM and I hit three <laughs> balls high flat middle. Yeah. And you like just reached up and like you had both hands just on that space. Just and I was awesome. And I was just like, I could have done anything. I was like, I literally could have just done anything and I would have gotten the kill. But instead I chose to hit high flat right at your hands. I was just like, what is happening? You know, it's just one of those like, and that was the thing is that from an offensive perspective, I was like, that's, I just remember going back and serve receiving going like, that's about as good as it's going to get. Like I couldn't have hit that ball any better. Right. I mean, if he does that again, like he's going to get a block, you know, like, and you did it again. I was like, I mean, okay. Like, yeah. I guess that's, we're just, we're here now, you know? Yeah. Cause some guys just, some guys just do things that you, and Miles Partain, like watching the film when we played them in Manhattan, he's on the line and he just keeps jumping. Yeah. Like it's, side to side. It's cre- and he's never, but he's never off balance. He's never watching out of position. Him, like shuffle and shuffle and yeah. shuffle back and forth, yeah. back and forth. He, he never lands. Like when I shuffle, you know, I'm, I'm leaning, if I'm shuffling right, I'm yeah. oh, pretty heavy in my right leg. And if I go, if then I have to go back to the left, I yeah. will literally just slide out. But yeah. Miles, he just, he lands like a deer. He's, He's just, so like, balanced. Ring, ring, ring. Yeah. It's so tough as an offensive player because I, I, I watched the video, I watched that video again and there were like four balls. I just shoot right to him. It's yeah. not even a good shot. <laughs> I just was like, I was like, he, I was waiting so long to read the play by the time I actually got to the ball, I was like, you don't have anything. Yeah. You literally don't have anything. Whatever you can do, you just have to do. And yeah. I literally just remember hitting line shots and he's just standing on it. And I was like, that's awful. Yeah. That was so bad. <laughs> you know, so I just remember, uh, I remember tell, tell, telling Hagen too. Hagen was like, what, you know, what can I do? And I was like, just whatever you see right away. Like if he's standing in the angle, you just yell line. And I'm going to hit the ball as hard as I can to the line. Yeah. I don't even care. I was like, if Paul is, Paul will get a lot of blocks right now. I literally don't care. If I yeah. shoot another ball to a guy that's just standing right there, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to. <laughs> I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm out of it. I'm just like, yeah. you know. Uh, and so I started challenging Paul a little bit more and finally was able to like translate some points. Um, there was actually one where they served Hagen. It's actually one of like, it's like a super viral video okay of me hitting paul on the head on an option he like i don't i think i don't think he was at the night i think he served he ramped in that option i hit it off his head it comes onto our side he runs underneath the net and it like so it's so it's me and hagan standing on the court and paul standing off the court and we all three are like looking at the ball yeah as it's coming down and it looks like it's about to land on the line and so Hagen puts out his arms and passes the ball as Paul is like putting his arm out to to try to play it back. Yeah. And so Hagen plays it and then like gets a kill. And we're all three just standing around like, what's the call? Yeah. Like what's the, like is it interference? Is it whatever? But I think it's got like I think it was like Lisa showed me like it was like two point seven million views or something like that. Jeez. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Some 
volleyball. I had the same thing happen to me and Kyle in uh, the finals of a Norseca in Mexico, <laughs> where it was really windy. It was in La Paz, one of my yeah, favorite yeah, places. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be windy. If and it's a... um, I think either I swung or Kyle swung, but the defender skyball dig coming yeah. on our side of the court, but it's coming around the antenna. Uh-huh. And right, right. So it's like pretty close to the line. And so I'm standing there with it and their blocker is running under the net and runs into me. Oh no. And he can't then can't make the play. Right. And so they gave them the point because it was interference on me. Because I got in his way of playing his ball. But oh. That was the call. And I Wow. I couldn't I could not. Gr- I still can't fully grasp it. And I really couldn't grasp it then because it was, you know, the, the ref was. So if you were people. playing the ball, so if you were playing the ball, at what point does it become your play and not his play anymore? And that's what I was wondering. I, I didn't know. I, I had no idea. I, I still, guess if you had taken it higher, I know because I was just standing there and it was going to land about a foot out, maybe two, oh, but really close got where. It. I wanted Got to it. see it because yeah. it was high and it's windy. And with the molten, yeah, the molten, oh, just, yeah. Whoosh, and it's just yeah. Whoosh, gone. You know? <laughs> and so I was just waiting for it. And it was uh, Miguel Sarabia who's playing with Juan Virgin now. Oh, who is phenomenal. Yeah. And, um, and so he runs into me and they call interference. We end up losing, not because of that. Uh, but I, was, <laughs> I like, it blew my mind. Imagine if you had lost because of that. Oh, man. That would have been a tragedy. I'd still be in the pause arguing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, yeah, Juan is – he was playing uh, Lombardo. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tavares. Yeah. We, uh, Matt, Matt Jones and I played them in San Diego. They were there for the Long Beach okay. FIB. I mean this was forever and a year ago. Yeah, what well, feels like forever and a year ago. Yeah. And um, they were playing them down in Mission Beach I think or you – know, what's the one right below it? Um, Ocean bo- Beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're playing, we played them in the semis. There was also another international team that played them in the finals. And I think uh, the Mexican team won. But I remember hitting a ball from the service line and I stroked it. Like I, I hit it hard. Yeah. Probably the best serve of the, the day. And he slides into the middle. Not full middle, but he kind of like passes outside his midline. But he slides there. And runs a back set. And so I get to run straight to the net as opposed to having to like round out my approach. I run straight to the net and I put up just what I felt was like, I mean, I'm. You're long. And uh, he crushes this ball right between my arms. Yeah. And like hot pockets it. And I turned to Matt and was like, that's the best play that I can give you. Period. Yeah. We're not winning this one. <laughs> like that's about as good as it's going to get from me. Yeah. And he just took everything and said, you're adorable. Yeah. And being called adorable without being called adorable is not fun on a volleyball court. Yeah. Like, oh, nice try, bud. He, uh, dude, he, we played, me and Tim played Juan and Miguel in the bronze medal match of Norseca and Aguas Calientes last year. Mm-hmm. And... Juan, so in Aguas, it, we were playing in uh, like an equestrian center. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So, it, you know, you have stadium seating. Yeah, type yeah, deal. yeah Mexico yeah. fans, they always show up. Super fun. So yeah, we're playing yeah. Mexico, bronze medal match, like Juan, legend, good crowd. Yeah. And um, but this equestrian center has this has this roof over it. And oh. the moments are pretty bouncy. And so, but I mean, you had to hit it yeah and yeah, you yeah. had to hit the right pocket yeah and still you probably couldn't get there and Juan hits this option that was just hot pocket <laughs> heavy ass arm scrapes the roof and i was like i've never seen anything like that i think i watched that game it actually unbelievable I, I don't know that i watched uh i watched i remember watching you guys and it was like in an indoor style yeah. like facility with like windows up on the corner um yeah, like like we talked about, I watch a lot of volleyball. Like literally, I'm like watching like like just you guys and like whatever. I and like all the guys who are traveling. I just and not even not even because I want to like watch them to like how can I like how can I beat them? Yeah, like it's just fun to watch. It's just fun to yeah. yeah just, just like fun. oh, I train with those guys. Like yeah. those guys are really good, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I remember watching. I don't know if I watched that game in particular, but man, that guy, his pants are just oh so gosh. strong. Like, freaking bear paw like he and he's a big guy too yeah like strong yeah sturdy yeah it's it's funny because i'm one of the sort of bigger yes players and 
it's rare that I run into a guy. I felt it's hilarious because a lot of people think I look when I grow the beard out, I look a little bit like Alison, but just a teeny oh. tiny Alison. Yeah, I could, okay, I can and see that. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, turned yeah. with Alison a couple years ago when he was in town, and Delaney was like, "You looked so tiny oh, compared to Alison." Yeah, and then again yeah. with Juan, and I think Borman's makes me feel pretty small as well. Yeah, because yeah. he's like a bigger dude. But Juan uh, is, who's the German guy? The German blocker? No, uh, Ellers. Yeah, Vickler Ellers. Vickler's so fun to watch, Oh, by my the way. gosh. I love Vickler. I don't know if you watch this podcast, but you're... I almost said hi to you in Miami because I'm a big <laughs> fan, but, like, you know, didn't want to be too weird. Um, but he... Uh, the Ellers was playing with his coach, and he kind of set this ball over to the pin. They were playing the Chilean teams, the yeah. Grimal cousins. And uh, Ellers, like, hits it from his top reach to the back corner. I mean, he made... He made the blocker, the Chilean blocker, looks so small. Yeah, and Marco it was, is pretty small. Yeah, yeah. Just, it almost looked like a jumbo. It was like a hard hit jumbo just yeah. over top of that. <laughs> he just hit it so high. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you are actually gigantic. Yeah. Some of, yeah, some of those guys are just, how strong they are in the air too. Yeah. Like, uh, I think, is Marco, Marcos the left sider for Chile? Uh, Marco's the right sider. Esteban's left sider. Esteban. Some of the time he's just up, like completely balanced, and then just like, yeah, yeah I'm like Whoa. he's playing really well. He's so strong, so yeah. good. Yeah, they they watching their game in Tepic was was fun uh, yeah. against who do they play? They obviously played a few games, but um, they played. I think the it was the round of twelve or they had a good one with Sweden. That that might have been that yeah. might have been the they one went I to watched three with Sweden in the round of twelve. That was what it was. Yeah, yeah. And of course, everyone likes watch Sweden. Watch, yeah. Like watching Sweden, like they're they're doing some fun stuff, but um. It's fun to watch like how teams are playing against them. Yeah. Um, now you know because I mean the Swedish team has been doing it for six years at this point. I um, mean, and that's only since we've seen them. That's what I'm saying. For a lot I was saying five that. or like yeah. So they've been doing you know add you know at plus one plus two years on top of that. Like I think the I think the best part is that they are just for me like when I watch them, they are just such gifted passers. Mm-hmm. Oh. Gosh, I like, I really enjoy, like, I really enjoy, I try to pride myself on my ability to just like create an angle and pass. And obviously it doesn't go great all the time, but their ability to just pass consistently into a good spot is so good. Yeah. So good. You know, and of course everyone watches the handsets and the do whatever, um, jump sets and stuff, but like even the free balls are just so intentional. The the digs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, like when, when, uh, Amen will, dig the line shot and then just bolt like just all in unison together. That's the thing I think is really fun to watch about those guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. The jump sets are cool. Um, but it's fun to watch. I mean, Smedins and Samoy loves, I think is another good example. Like yeah. they really control the pass really well and the set, you know, it, cause their attacks really aren't like amazing. Not anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. But the pass in the set kind of dictated the play for them. So yeah. they are able to then kind of, you know, but yeah, I mean, those Helvig and Amon have shoulders. Like oh, they've oh got 21 year old shoulders. Amon's, like they're just his ability to hit that wrist away option. Yeah. It's with that much pace. Yo. I was talking to Kame about it. And man, oh man. I mean, well, look you've at never how, seen anything like it. Well, and look at how he's hitting it too. It's not even like he's hitting it out here. Yeah. He's, he's hot. Yeah. So as a blocker, like if you try to go make the play anyways, I mean, granted where he's at, you know, at where the ball is crossing the net, yeah. it's not crossing super high, but it's, it's with speed and it's traveling a distance away from where the, where the contact point is. I mean, and it's high, high contact point. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. And I mean, Helvig is doing just as well too. I mean, oh, yeah. super he's high. So, like, it's amazing that. Helvig, in my mind, is one of the most underrated players oh, in the world yeah. because everyone just looks at yep. Amon yep. justifiably. Yep. But it starts with Helvig's passing. Uh, yeah. Everything. It's I, I think perfect it, passing. And then his options aren't as flashy as sure. Amon's, but he just hangs and hangs, and that line's yep. open. He just snaps it. Yep. This little 65-70% yep. that's so effective. And, and the, the decision-making is pinpoint. I think there are dynamic. Pardon me. I think their dynamic works really well together too. Yeah. I think, you know, and that's, I think is really fun is that like the team's dynamic is really like Theo and Trevor, I think are great together. Yeah. I think Try and Kame are great together. Like Tim and Kyle are phenomenal, you know, and like 
Hagen and I worked really well together too, because like, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to be the center of attention. Like I didn't, I didn't care at all. Um, and so it like, it was a nice balance because like, <laughs> Hagen would like soak it up for me, yeah, which was great because I was like I didn't really want it, you know. Um, so it was phenomenal. But like that 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 team dynamic is so important, and you can really tell with those guys. I mean, they have the like silly block cheer high five yeah. and the silly ace, you know, spinning yeah. whatever. Or and it's cute, it's adorable, you know. They're they're kids, and it's nice to it's nice to get that that dynamic because you, you know, you have like guys like Brower Musen who are just machines that kind of just do their thing, you know, like their guy does something good and they'll kind of roar about it, but then they kind of go back into their, you know, yeah, you know, back into kill mode. Yeah. These guys are just like happy to be out there. It it looks like, you know, and that's really cool because the joy of the game is just, Oh my gosh. I love watching Amon's post-match interviews because (laughs) most of the time post-match interviews, It'll be a pretty cliche thing. Sure, you know, sure, 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 sure. Like you know, it's a good match. We're just we're excited to be moving on. Like they played great, really good match. And Amon's just like, I love playing global. That was so fun to see. <laughs> and he's just like wide eyed, like Red Bull, like straight to the veins. And it's I'm like that kid is. I mean, it is joy. And it's similar. Miles Partain isn't as effusive with his yeah, joy. Yeah. But when you talk to him. He, I mean, he should be in this chair, and we'd have the three greatest volleyball nerds there ever was. Dude, he's cold blooded too when it comes to like training. Yeah. Like he just like he's so dialed in on the things that he wants to do that makes him that he knows are going to further his ability to be good. And like I wish, gosh, I wish you could just teach that to younger folks. Yeah, playing the game. My favorite Miles Pertain story of many. Then I think this list will grow. So he came <laughs> on a trip to Yosemite with us. Okay. And so it was me, Delaney, Mesco, my older brother, and Miles Pertain. What a combo. What a, what a group, by the Amazing. way. Amazing, yeah. What a group. And so we're – it's an A-frame house. Okay. And it had recently snowed in Yosemite. And so every now and then, snow falls off the roof. Right. And it's right. really loud. It sounds like thunder. And so at <laughs> 3 in the morning, we hear the snow fall off the roof, and it sounds like thunder. We wake up, we go back to sleep, and we were just – the next morning, we were just talking. We are like, did you guys hear that uh, snow fall off the roof last night? It was really loud. And Miles goes, oh, sorry, that, that was me. I was working on my arm swing at 3 in the morning, and I hit the ceiling. <laughs> no way. I was like, Miles, that was snow, but thank you so much for sharing that story with me. That is amazing. I my my favorite story from training with with him was when he was so it was him and Andy. So he actually it was him and Andy, and I think uh, Jersey Jake was there. Okay, I don't know how to say Jake's last name. Yeah. Jake, I don't know how to say your last name. I. Every, oh, we're glad you're here. We like him. Everyone has told me how to say it, and I still don't know how to say yeah. it. So Jersey Jake is – we're playing down in Hermosa, First Street, and he – we we get there. It's like 2, two o'clock, 2 p.m. Like, hey, let's let's go down there. We all get there, and so we're warming up, and like Andy, Jake, and I are kind of throwing the ball around, and Miles is there. Um, and he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to go like warm up a little bit. And we're like, okay, cool. Like we're thinking like over the net pepper and like yeah. Arsene or whatever. He proceeds to like take a band and just run to the ocean and then does a 20 minute warm up just right next to the ocean. Yeah. And all three of us were like, do we start? <laughs> I, I was I, I went back home and I told Lisa, I was like, I want to teach my son to warm up like that guy. Yeah. Because when I was his age, we go, I mean, we go down. And just start hitting balls. Oh, yeah. You just like eat a Hot Pocket and you start playing. Yeah, literally. Yeah, a couple tacos. A couple tacos in Santa Cruz. And just like, let's go. Yeah. You know, uh, we would play a lot of Volus in in, uh, in Santa Cruz. So we would just start with Volus. So you yeah. get warm that way. But it was amazing. It was the first kind of experience with like, he, he like rolled up to training the other day and like uh, with a scooter and a, like a helmet. Yeah. And like the whole thing. I was like, that's a vibe. Yeah. That is a vibe. I love it. And it's he, amazing. Man, and like one of the probably the single nicest human being in oh, his yeah. family is incredible. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you man, he is a killer. Oh yeah. On the court. Yeah. I mean, he like he's not gonna talk trash. He's not gonna be like a Trevor or try in your face. Yeah. But he will I mean I think him and Sponsel are so similar mm. in that because Sponsel off the court, like goofy, happy, yeah, 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 giggling, yeah, yeah. laughing, yeah. like kind as can be. 
put her on the court and she is just like sicko mode. Yeah. Like, I'm getting kills. I'm just going to scoop you and <laughs> yeah. scoop and score like yeah. it's nothing. <laughs> see you later, bud. Yeah. <laughs> nothing personal, kid. You know, yeah. just like, cry. yeah, I could see that. I actually see that. I like that a lot. That's a good, that's a good way to frame that. And two of the best defenders in the world. I was going to say, they're phenomenal. And I'm putting Miles in one of the best defenders in the world already. I'm, I am conducting that hype train. I, you know, okay, after watching a lot of Pirisic, I, I agree with you. I think Pirisic is number one yeah. for me right now. Pirisic is high. I think, I think DeGroote, well, I think Amon's number one in the world for me in terms of defenders. Okay, okay. And then I'd put like Pirisic, Sorum, um, DeGroote. He's good. Vickler. Oh, Vickler's phenomenal. Yeah. Vickler, Vickler's Talk Vick- about smooth and strong. Clemens Vickler. Yeah, his his transit his his ability his transition percentage I would have to argue is probably the better yeah of of the group and so I think that's why he probably gets the 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 nod yeah. for a lot of it but like as far as like pure like movement and like defense like Paris is just so good I mean yeah. especially too like Schweiner is good but like I mean he's not. He's not mole. He's not an athletic freak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's not like gigantic. Yeah, he's you know. s- solid. Yeah, very solid. Yeah, and so that's it. You know, it's it, I, I'm interested too where the Qatar guys kind of they just haven't been playing. I think it, you know it goes in waves. I think yeah. they just haven't. Uh, I feel like really changed much. Yeah, you know, they yeah. they were number one in the world for a bit and. I don't know if teams are playing them differently Ooh, or yeah. if they've kind of – because they are serving Ahmed every single ball. So I don't know if they've just seen something with Ahmed that they're yeah. doing. But I'm not too concerned. I think if you're going to have a low point, right now is a good time to yeah, have it. Then you yeah. figure shit out and by yeah, the time Paris yeah, comes, yeah. you're back to like, how do we beat Qatar? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. It's it's really f- – the, the rankings for the men's side, I think it's – there's just so much – I mean, same for the women. Like, there's that sort of variety because you have a really good Netherlands team. The Italian team had a really good uh, yeah. finish that I hadn't really seen the women's Italian team. Valentina is – she's going to be very good. Yeah. The, she's the right side, right? She's the blocker. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. She was – she took a couple swings. So I was like, you're going to need to – you're going to need to specifically play that because if you don't, like – yeah you're going to lose. Like if you give that up every time you're going to lose. Like <laughs> yeah. that was, it was like really good and repeatable. Um, but yeah, like really fun to watch those teams and kind of see how the rankings are like rankings are like kind of playing out. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily for the Olympic run, but just for like the top teams yeah. right now. Like it's, it's nice to, it's nice that you don't have just Mole and Sorum. Now you have, there's a couple other teams That's, that are like contending serious. for yeah. like, you know, the Swedes and obviously, um, and then I feel like, Brower Musen are never out of the conversation. Oh, they're always there. Yeah, they're you know it's interesting too where the 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 Brazilian teams like the Brazilian Brazilian teams haven't seen to yeah. be doing super well on the men's side. Same thing for the women though. The for the women in the U.S. and the women for Brazil seem to be doing very strong. Yeah. Um, which I mean, dude is dude is crazy. Just <laughs> amazing. And yeah. Anna Patricia. Anna Patricia. Yeah. I mean, it just never looks like it looks like her effort is about fifteen percent at all times, but. She's they just win. Oh yeah, all the time. Well, so, I mean, Andre and George, like, tr- like watching George, or watching Andre hit, you kind of like, kind of doesn't look like he's hitting it super high. I mean, he's six seven, but yeah. like he's you know he's moving the ball. I was talking to Rio about it because they played, they played George and Andre to get into Tepic, and he's like he hits the ball so hard. Yeah, it's like when it's a block, it's. A true block. Like one of those like elbow dislocations. Yeah, yeah. Like he's like, it hurts, but like you, you're happy you got the block, you yeah. know? And then he's like, just George is just. Just smoking balls from 10 feet off the net. Just, Nuts. yeah. It, <laughs> Tre- Trevor's like, yeah, you see him in street clothes and he does not look like yeah. a volleyball player, you yeah. know? Like, he's just like, but he is, yeah. Those, I mean, it's, it's, it's just interesting because those guys are phenomenal at their craft. They just don't seem to be having the finishes quite that correlate to how good they are yeah so yeah it'll be i mean hopefully hopefully they get better and i'm sure they will and then this season like kind of like you're saying like for the avp is going to be really interesting as well because you have i mean right now new orleans you have four teams five teams that are out yeah i mean it's (laughs) tim and kyle are the two yeah 
And you got so you got try and came. Yep. And then you have like a phenomenal CBVA. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a good way to frame it. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is. It is the time now. I think for some of these like, you know, twelve through let's say six seated teams that normally would be there. Yeah. It's time for them to kind of step up and say like. I'm part of the show. I, I deserve to be here. You know, yeah. Kyle and Tim did it last year in a pretty strong field. Mm-hmm. Um, beating, they beat the Taylors in Atlanta and then Theo and came in Chicago. Yeah. Good wins. Yeah. And they should have, they should have. I watched that video that AVP posted that, those little like uh, clipped out videos. Yeah. They should have beat the Taylors in Chicago as well. And they should have beat the Taylors in Miami. That's true. <laughs> that is. 13 10. That is true. And uh, yeah, it's just those guys have shown that they should be there yeah. and like you know it's it's a good opportunity for some of those those teams that are trying to like continue to continue to be relevant or continue to be there to make the make the push you know like yeah. i think there's a lot of good teams that are that are maybe a little bit lower that are going to be at the top of the qualifier that are in now yeah you know you guys are. Could you guys you are. Few? Me and Avery are the ten. You guys are ten. Yeah, we're eight. Yeah, we're eight. I don't yeah. know how Evan and Logan are below us, but they are. Yeah. So we get we get Evan <laughs> and Logan at nine. Um. So that'll be a battle. And then I think if we, if we win, we get try and that'll try and fun. Camp, which will be a battle. Yeah. Which will be a battle. Um. But yeah, like it's just now is the time for a lot of those players to like really push through. Because then once the season kind of progresses, but Manhattan it's the same time as Hamburg, yeah. So that's going to be it'll be interesting. I mean, that's already a bigger tournament to begin with, but that's another one. It'll be wide open. Hermosa is the same as Stad. Hermosa is Gestad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was really happy about that. Was he? <laughs> no, he's like the best stop in the world tour conflicts with the stop in our backyard. Oh and yeah. Season. Golly. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the best part about Hermosa being the first my first pro event. Yeah. Fully loaded. Yeah, right right where I train. Yeah. Train there all the time. You know. So cool too. Have my dad there in game but you know, the first game. Yeah. Uh Lisa brought down I mean Lisa's an absolute stud. Like Zephyr was a month old. <laughs> like just like she has the asleep with the little like the you know yeah yeah, yeah yeah um she brought quest uh down quest had, had quest had school for game one and she's like yeah you're probably gonna lose so i don't want to take him out of school for that and i was like that's fair <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was like yeah that's fair like that makes sense um and so but he came down and i just remember him like he he like we finished the game and he goes like all right cool can we play now he like didn't know what was happening. Yeah. I was like, I mean, your dad just took uh, at the very least a fifth, but yeah, yeah, we can like throw yeah. the truck around and like play, <laughs> you know. So that was cool. And then um, Lisa, Lisa, and the kids were down there on Saturday, and then my parents both came down on Sunday for uh, for Theo and came. Um, so it's just, like really nice to be able to have like your family there. Yeah. It's just such a different experience when you're playing like in front of your kid. Oh, for sure. Like it's, yeah, it's. It's amazing to to be able to play at a high level and to like have success and do whatever, but to be able to like share that moment with like your child, um, and I'm sure Quest doesn't even remember, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you did the thing. You went down and played. You know, <laughs> he's like, are you going down to the beach to play volleyball today, Dad? I'm like, yeah. Um, but for the most part, he it's just nice to have him. It's a memory that I will always cherish. Yeah. And hold on to, but you know, and then maybe when he's a little bit older, he'll kind of know what's happening. Um, but yeah, to take a third in Chicago in the first year, it's pretty damn good. It's not, I mean, I can't complain about it. It's pretty dang good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. So I'm just happy with where I'm at. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are, a lot of people are like, you know, oh, you like, you had an amazing year last year. Like, you know, are you going to, you going to try to build on it? Like, of course. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's always going to happen, right. you know? So it's like, I'm, it's just nice to be in a spot where like, I'm happy with the way I'm playing. I'm happy with my like family. I have a beautiful wife who runs my social media. Who <laughs> <laughs> couldn't be happier about. Yeah. No, she if no, she she is the glue. I couldn't do what I do without her. Um 
Yeah, especially with the kids. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. It's a, it's a special but, thing. Yeah, it is. You'll you'll uh, you'll find out soon. Yeah, very soon. By the time this episode comes out, it'll, we'll have a kid. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you'll and you'll know. You'll know. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's, it's just nice to be able to like be able to to do the things that you love, have a family, have a couple of kids that are like just obviously amazing. Play volleyball. Live your life. Work a full time job. Like pretty good life. Yeah, I can't complain. You know, it's a long <laughs> yeah. road from Huntington. Yeah, from where in Huntington, but. It's uh, everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own journey. And like you kind of find what makes you you. Yeah. You just keep riding the wave. Love that. Keep riding the wave. Keep riding it. Yeah. Well, Jake, I could obviously nerd out with you oh, all night long. All night. But D has uh, dinner getting cooked up. Love that. And we get to, you know, I'll be your Tim Bobbin for the next couple of days. Anyway, so Love you can that. nerd out every day. I'm, exci- <laughs> I'm excited. You actually played, but I watched video of Tim uh, yesterday and you played pretty close. <laughs> it was like pretty I close. The there was a compliment I've ever There were a couple of times I was like, oh, that, I saw that move. I saw that move the other day. I saw it live. It was, they looked a little different, but I saw it live. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Well, good chatting. Uh, good luck in New Orleans. You and as well, if, sir. Uh, well, from the ten, we could see. You know, let's see in the finals. I like that. Let's make that. I happen. was gonna say, yeah, we're eight. Because you're the, on the bottom I'm side. The ten and the two. You're the eight. And yeah. The one. Eight. Okay. We'll see you there. Let's go. See you on Sunday. See you on Sunday. I don't baby. know what time it is, but I'll be there. <laughs> Great. All right, buddy. I love that. Shoots.